Bad day, the main character was playing his favorite game as usual. He was on a subway train and nothing strange happened, well, or almost nothing. Suddenly, a network connection error appeared on his phone screen, and the main screen started loading. Then the young man woke up. The error of connecting to the network and loading the main screen was still visible on the smartphone screen. Suddenly, the main character realized that he had been sitting on the floor for some time. The hero raised his head and saw that he was not on the train or in the subway at all. The young man saw before him the throne room and people unfamiliar to him. He was sitting on some kind of magic seal, and next to him was another young man and a girl in a school uniform. An unknown young man reached out to the girl and asked if she was okay. The girl says she's fine and then thanks him for his help. The girl took her head and asked what was going on here. The main character drew attention to the girl and the boy and thought that they were also dragged without explaining anything. The main character starts to get back on his feet and thinks that, then, maybe he has just been called to another world, like in a manga or a game. After a while, the king, sitting on the throne, greeted the brave heroes who arrived. The main character thought that it was simply impossible for him to get into one of the biggest cliches in games. At this time, the man on the throne introduced himself as the king of this kingdom, Joseph Roa pays not, and now his kingdom is in a difficult situation because of the proximity to the demon continent. Therefore, he turns to the brave heroes and says that they could not defeat the demon lord for them. The main character thinks that the king speaks like an idiot and does not look like he is in a difficult situation. Then another person turns to them and asks them to let him explain everything. But first can he find out their names? The main character says that his name is Sakurai. The girl introduces herself as Takanashi and the other young man is called Watanabe. The man is happy that at last their long dream of summoning heroes has come true. He calls the trio brave heroes and says that they believe that the three of them have the potential to become much stronger than ordinary people. As his majesty just said, their kingdom is located right after the demon continent. And that's why they need them to become stronger and crush the demon lord. Sakurai grinned and asked if they really took him for a fool. The main character thinks that, it seems, the other two also do not particularly sympathize with the king. The man turns to the brave heroes and asks them to open their status windows, so they will be convinced of their strength. Then comes an unexpected silence. Boys and girls look at each other and do not understand what is required of them. The man was surprised and says that this is very careless on his part because they have never seen the status window before. The man demonstrates how to open the status window correctly and what needs to be said at this moment. Just by saying the right command, they can see their current status. Sakurai sees that something has suddenly appeared. The main character understands that this world is very similar to the game. His nerd blood just boils from it. He also utters a command to open the status window. The girl and the young man are surprised by his sudden action. They look closely, nod to each other and also use the command to open their status windows. Sakurai examines the screen that appears. He had the first level, and his profession was a priest. All of his stats were low level, and his recovery had as many as a hundred points. Sakurai had a supporting role. He smiled awkwardly and thought that this was the most unbalanced build he had ever seen. So, he has three skills, one of which was the language proficiency skill. So that's why they can easily understand each other, despite the fact that they are from different worlds. In addition, there is also treatment and regeneration. Needless to say, these two skills are also very useful. And the fact that he has a job as a priest means that he is a healer. The man is surprised and says that he is a healer. This is a very rare hero. There is an advanced job for a healer called a priest and the most impressive thing is that he can heal any injuries, no matter how serious they are. The young man smiles awkwardly. He just, out of habit, showed to aim. But if you think about it, in this world, to aim is the initial job before the priest. Well, he thinks that for now he will say that his job is a healer. The girl says that her job is a sorcerer. The man says it's wonderful and it's an advanced job for magicians. The young man says that his work is a hero. Everyone in the hall is shocked. Mr. Watanabe is indeed a hero. Sakurai understands that he sympathizes with him. It sounds like a big problem. But to be honest, of the three of them, he looks least like a hero. The man says there is something else. By raising the level, they can increase their stats as they please, so they shouldn't forget about it. Watanabe asks if he can really raise them himself if he wants. Then he asks, then, if he can use the 50 points they have. He is not sure what characteristics to increase. Sakurai looks at his status window. The man asks Watanabe if he still has glasses. The man says it must be a gift from the gods because he is a hero. Usually they have to level up to get points. Sakurai understands that this is just like in games. That is, points can be used to pump attack, defense, magic and recovery. 
Then Sakurai apologizes and says what is the average value for the characteristics here. The man replies that it is usually within 20 to 30 depending on the person's work. If he manages to raise them above 50, then you become so strong that no one will object to you until you want to become a first-class master. Watanabe and Takanashi do not understand what they are talking about, but Sakurai is thinking at this moment. He thinks about 50 points, that his recovery has as many as 100. If 50 is enough to be called a master, then how strong is he with 100 points in recovery? He thinks he has legendary power. Most likely, this is more than enough to never invest points in it again. He's not sure he should check it out. The young man remembers his old scars, which he left after an accident in childhood. Because of him, he never wore short-sleeve clothes. This is a great opportunity to test the skill. The young man looked around everywhere and used the treatment. Then he tries to feel his scar and realizes that it has completely disappeared. Probably, this means that he can treat not only fresh wounds, but also old ones too. Then he thinks that he no longer needs to invest points in recovery. In that case, how should he distribute his points? Usually the healer is required to do the first thing, it is not to die, and the second is a good position and the last is to treat well. Usually people think of increasing protection first, so as not to die so easily. He means that there is nothing wrong with the fact that the healer who first killed monsters dies faster than his allies. However, it will be very boring. Of course, protection is important, but he will still take damage from enemy attacks and, in the end, he will not have enough mana to heal both allies and himself. Then what will be the correct solution? The young man looks at his status window and begins to invest points. He thinks about the fact that he just needs to avoid everything, so he puts all 50 points into evasion. You'll be able to better support your allies if you don't take damage. It sounds strange, but this is the ideal path of a healer, according to the theory of the main character. And the faster his allies defeat the enemies, the faster they will be able to move forward. Takanashi turns to the young man and asks, addressing him by name, if he has finished distributing his points. The young man gave a positive answer and said that he had invested everything in evasion. The man started shouting and asking what the young man had just said. The men asked if Sakurai really put all his points into dodging. He had to put everything into recovery if he is a healer. The man called the young man stupid and said that he would not even be able to heal a scratch and would just be a dead weight for these two. He asks why he didn't consult with him before. Sakurai was surprised and said that he thinks he will be fine if he has 100 recovery points. The man kept shouting, asking if he had any brains at all. He also told him that a healer is a rare job. The king started shouting for them to throw this fool in jail immediately. He says that this useless man is not worthy of being called a hero. The girl tried to stop his majesty and said that it was very wrong. She is sure that Sakurai had reasons to do so. The king starts shouting and asking how dare they tell him what to do. After a while, the young man was released into prison. The knights throw him into a cage and laugh that one can only imagine that there is such a useless healer as Sakurai. The man swings at him with his fist and orders him to die. Sakurai tries to cover himself with his hands, and then abruptly pulls away to the side and evades. The guard even froze for a moment. He didn't understand how he was able to miss. Sakurai also didn't understand what had happened. Then the man also tries to hit Sakurai, but the young man dodges again and again. Another man asked the first one what he was doing. The man says that he tried to stuff the face of this useless stupid man but he somehow managed to dodge all the blows. The man told him to stop talking nonsense. Sakurai thinks it's because he put all his skills into dodging. The man swings his leg and asks what, in this case, a useless target will do. Suddenly, the man misses, and the young man dodges at this moment. They try to strike one blow after another, but misses. They didn't understand what was going on and what was wrong with this guy, because he was just a healer. They both chuckled and said it was very disgusting. Then they lock the young man up and leave. Sakurai laughs and says it serves them right, and then asks which one of them is useless now, unlike the soldiers who couldn't even hit the healer. And now he's trying to figure out what to do with it. Firstly, they called it useless without even being convinced of it. This wouldn't have happened if they had checked his status window. Although the king was very aggressive, he thinks it's better to keep it all a secret for now. Now he has to figure out how to escape from here. However, he believes that he will not be able to move freely outside. He was called to a rather problematic place. I wonder what these two are doing there now. The only thing he can say is that he's been stung by them now. Probably, for now, he will think about the future and test his skills. The young man opens his status window and wonders if he should be injured in order to use healing. 
However, if possible, he would not want to harm himself. After all, the reason for choosing such a build is very simple. He does not want to get injured. So only regeneration remains. Regeneration is one of the basic spells from classic RPGs. He's just using regeneration on himself. The young man uses regeneration and feels wonderful warmth, as in the treatment. He doesn't know how effective. He wonders how many times he will be able to use this skill. Sakurai starts using skill after skill. His body begins to wrap itself in warmth. He thinks it feels like sunbathing in the sun. He still doesn't feel any discomfort. It doesn't look like he has exhausted his mana supply. There must be some limit to the use of this skill. Does this mean that his mana reserve is simply huge? If in this world, those who have 50 points in characteristics are considered strong, he wouldn't be surprised if he, who has 100 points in the characteristic, would become the greatest healer of mankind. He is so glad that the king does not even know about it. He thinks there is no problem in his healing abilities. However, he would also like to have a more diverse skill besides healing and regeneration. But then again, he's still level 1, so maybe there will be a chance to raise him in the future. He closes the status and sighs. This warmth made him very sleepy. He thinks he will wait a little longer before running away from here, and now he will sleep. Then two people descend into the cell, a young man and a girl. The young man says that he is surprised that Sakurai can sleep in such a place. The girl says that he must be very tired after everything that happened to him. The young man says, laughing, that he has nothing to say. Then the girl wakes him up and says that he is a dormouse. Then the young man wakes up and rubs his eyes. Sakurai wakes up and wishes Watanabe and Takanashi good morning. The young man was dressed in a knight's uniform and the girl in a beautiful dress. The young man says that the king has agreed to release him from prison, so they should leave this place as soon as possible. Sakurai smiles and says a big thank you to them. The three of them were called into a completely different world, in which a level system, like in an RPG, is the norm. Watanabe asks the young man how he feels and if everything is fine with them. Sakurai says he's fine. Then they enter the room, and the young man is surprised that everything is completely shining here, and there is a picture of the acting king on the wall. Watanabe apologizes and says it's a little stressful. Sakurai says that, to be honest, he doubts the designer's sanity at all. Watanabe offers to sit down and discuss what they know at the moment. The young man says that if Sakurai is hungry, he can eat at least all these fruits. They were called into this world to defeat the evil demon lord, or so the inhabitants of this world said. According to the king, it looks like they will send them home after they defeat the demon lord. Moreover, he will be returned to exactly the time and place where they originally were, as if nothing had happened. Sakurai says it sounds very vague. The girl responds positively and says that they dared to live in luxury. When you trust a bunch of complete strangers with such an important mission, Watanabe says that even if they defeat the demon lord in the future, there is a possibility that they won't want to send them home. Sakurai says he was worried that the guys would believe the king's strange story. Boys and girls shake hands. Watanabe says he thinks he is not so easily influenced by others. Sakurai says they seem to be his real allies. Watanabe says that from now on, the young man can just call him Ren, and the girl says that she would be glad if her name was Ruri. Sakurai suggests calling him Hiroki. Sakurai thinks they are his comrades. Of course, he had them in games, but this is the first time he meets them in real life and he hopes that they will get along well. Anyway, even if they can't believe the people here, he still thinks it would be better for them if he maintained good relations with this kingdom. Ren says he means that if they have a way to summon someone to this world, they also have to have a way to send him back. The girl says that if they ask her, she is more interested in other races. Sakurai asks again and clarifies about other races. The girl replies that she has heard that the inhabitants of this world can be more or less divided into three races. Now they are in the Kingdom of Landscape, which is located on the continent of people, Loquat. In addition, there is also the continent of Epicot, where demons and beastmen live, who live on the continent of Tangerine. However, there is a chance that they will be able to find clues on other continents, especially on the continent of Epicot, where demons live, who are very good at magic. Which way is it better for them to choose now? Sakurai asked them if they had been told how the skills worked. The young man and the girl gave positive answers. Ren replied that there seemed to be three kinds of skills in this world. The first is passive skills. Such skills are active all the time, for example, their knowledge of the language. The next type is combat skills. They are activated when wearing special equipment, armor, or weapons, like creating flames when you swing a sword. Their strength depends on the level of your defense and attack. The skills that he has belong to this kind. 
and the last kind is magic skills. With these skills, they can use the mana inside them and turn it into magic. Simply put, the magic of Rory and Sakurai is an example of such skills. The strength of such skills depends on the level of their magic and recovery. Sakurai understands and says that, therefore, he will not be able to become a jack of all trades so easily. Now it has become clear that they also need to learn some information from people. But still, he can't get rid of the feeling that there should be clues in other kingdoms. But how should he tell them about it? Ren says that they both plan to stay in this kingdom, so they want Hiroki. But before he can finish, he asks the young man to forget about it. Sakurai says this is what they have to do. Sakurai says that he has also thought about it and he wants to say that there is no reason for all of them to stay here, so he wants to go outside in search of any clues. Ren asks if he's going to be okay for sure. Sakurai says that there is no problem with this, because, after all, this is a healer with perfect evasion. Ren asks again about the healer with perfect evasion. Rory says that now that H has mentioned it, this is indeed the reason why he spent all his points on evasion. That's why he was thrown into prison. The girl says that they also distributed their points the way they usually do here. That is, knights and magicians increase protection. The magician also increases magic, and the knight attack. Sakurai says that he imagined something like this. Rory asks if the young man really knew this, but then she asks why he spent all his points on evasion. The young man throws an apple and says that increasing evasion means that you will be able to avoid any attacks. Apples fall straight, but misses the young man's body. Ren and Rory are surprised. Ren says it makes him practically invincible. He says it's really clever. Sakurai says that, after all, he is a good player. Ren and Rory bow. Ren says that right now he is absolutely sure that he is the perfect person for the mission. It will be full of dangers, but he completely relies on the young man. Sakurai tells them to just leave everything to him. In truth, he is a little nervous about what will happen to him when he leaves this castle. But more than that, he can't wait to see another world with his own eyes. Being a gamer to the core, of course, it is troublesome. But still he is surprised that the king allowed him to get out of prison. Ren says that, speaking about it, to be honest, he did not want to tell the young man about it. But he thinks that he should hide something from his comrades. He shows him the bracelet. He says it's a contract bracelet. The king promised them freedom of movement as long as he wears it. Sakurai is seriously scared and says that Ren is really playing him. He says that the young man is not free at all now. He asks what kind of contract the king made him sign. Rory wants to say something, but Ren interrupts her. He laughs and says it's nothing serious. He simply cannot leave the kingdom without the king's permission. Sakurai gets angry and says it's just a curse. This king dares to treat the summoned hero as a pet. But worst of all, this would not have happened if he had not made such a rash decision. The young man says he's not going to apologize or anything like that. He asks just to wait for him. He will definitely find a way to remove this damn bracelet. Rory says he's right. He must not forget about her. She will look for a way inside the kingdom. Ren thanks the people and says he's really glad the two of them were drafted with him. Then they want to discuss how they will communicate with each other. Sakurai says that if they will use their names when contacting each other. He means that the king only knows their surnames and that's it. Ren says Sakurai is right, because they didn't say their full names. Ren says that in this case, messages with their surnames should be traps. The girl says that Hiroki's things are located here. Besides, he has to take their stuff too. He can sell them when he needs the money. Ren says that he is going on a very dangerous adventure, and this is the last thing they can do for him. He asks me to take his pen and notebook. The girl says that she gives him her mirror and a handkerchief. Sakurai accepts the gifts and thanks them. He says he will definitely bring good news. Ren tells Sakurai to take care of himself. After a while, the burden leaves the royal palace. He looks around the neighborhood and says it looks just like the Middle Ages on Earth. It feels like he's literally in a classic RPG. It's getting late whether he should look for a hotel. But first he needs to get money and, of course, information. He thinks he needs to find a store and sell things. He sees a lot of adventurers on the streets. He thinks about what he has to sell. He wouldn't want to sell the things that Ren and Rory gave him. Moreover, the battery on his phone will live as long as Power Bank is alive. He also remembers that he had three small chocolates, but there are only three of them, so he doesn't think anyone will want to buy them. Why does he notice a grocery store with vegetables and thinks that maybe it will be possible to use them like this? But he needs to learn more about it. He wonders if there are guilds in this world, like in an RPG, something like a tavern or something like that. He turns around and tries to understand why people around him are looking at him like that. Then he pays attention to the clothes and thinks that they look quite strange and unusual. He thinks he needs to buy new clothes as soon as possible. Healers and magicians usually wear robes, but he would prefer something that would be easy to move around in. 
then the young man notices an index sign. He is trying to figure out where the Adventurer's Guild is located. Then it opens the status window. He understands that his status bar is written in Japanese. It turns out that knowledge of the language does not work on the text. He falls to his knees and realizes that there was a sudden end at the very beginning. Then someone approaches the young man and asks if everything is fine with him. Sakurai says he doesn't know where the guild is located. In front of him he sees a nice girl who asks him if he is lost. Then Sakurai realizes that he is being helped like a small child and it is so embarrassing. The girl says that in fact, she also lost her friends. The girl says that she thinks that she and the young man are in the same boat. She is also heading to the Adventurer's Guild. Then the young man asks if the girl is a magician. She gives a positive answer. Then she says that she recently defeated slugs on her first assignment and she was coming back to get a reward. The young man understands that he can earn money by fighting. Then Sakurai says that he understood everything and then offers to look for them a guild together. The girl agrees, but then someone calls her Tina from the wall. They said from the wall that they had found her. Sakuri asks the girl if these are her friends. The girl gives a positive answer and says that Floyd and Dine are calling them. They shouted that they were very worried after she suddenly disappeared. Then the young man asks Tina who is next to her. The girl says that this is another lost child. The young man says that he is glad to meet and his name is Hiroki. Tina says that the young man is looking for a guild. Then a man comes up and says he can go with them. The man says his name is Floyd and he is an adventurer. The young man next to me says his name is Dine. The girl holds out her hand and says that her name is Tina and she is glad to meet you. Sakurai shakes the girl's hand and says it's mutual. The man points with his hand and calls Sakurai in this direction. But this time, Dinah asks Tina if she is okay. Then he shows the young man one place and says that this is the strangest building in the area and he will not be able to miss it. The man says that this is the Adventurer's Guild. Sakurai asks if this is the Adventurer's Guild. The man gives a positive answer and says that he looks very reliable. In the end, in the event of an emergency, she will become their headquarters. The man laughs and says that he is not sure that the dragon will not be able to get there. Sakurai asks if monsters can really get into the city. The man gives a negative answer and then says that the last time it happened was about a hundred years ago. Sakurai says that he understood everything and then thinks that he should hurry up and raise his level, just in case. Then they enter the Adventurer's Guild. He is happy that he is here and every gamer would like to be here. The man says that now they are going to report on the completion of the task, and then he asks if he really needs to register now. Then he needs to go that way to the left rack. He tells him to let him know if he needs anything. Then the girl at the reception desk says that her name is Hala, and then she asks how she can help the young man. He thinks it's really a beastman. Her cat ears are twitching cute, so there is also one beastman in the kingdom of humans. Then the girl twitches her ears and says that it is very rare to see beastmen here, but, unfortunately, she is a half-breed. Sakurai apologizes for looking at the girl like that. She says that everything is fine and everything is fine. The young man says that his name is Hiroki and he would like to become an adventurer. The girl asks if he is really here to register, then she will explain everything to him. The young man agrees with the girl. The girl says that usually the Adventurer's Guild, in relation to the three continents, is a neutral force and there are a lot of representatives of any race in their ranks, because anyone can join. The girl says that after the young man registers, he can take as many tasks as he wants. You can get them on that wall over there. The young man says that, to tell the truth, he can't read. The girl says that the young man should not worry, because he can get recommendations on tasks right at the counter like those people. The girl asks the young man to be extremely careful when choosing tasks. There were many who said goodbye to their lives because they took more than they could handle. The young man thinks that the girl is right and no matter how much this world looks like a game, but it will all be over if he dies. The girl thinks that this is all and the young man can register. Sakurai agrees. Then the girl holds out a piece of paper and says that the young man, in this case, must fill out this form and pay 3,000 lots of the fee. Sakurai is surprised and thinks that it's not free. The girl says that she forgot that the young man can't read, and then asks if she can fill out everything for him. The young man believes that one plus E will not be as easy as he imagined. He needs to come up with an excuse. The young man says that he has just left the village and he has no money, so can he sell some of his things? The girl says that the guild will be happy to buy them. She asks what the young man wants to sell, but the girl says that this has a very bright packaging and they have never seen anything like this before. The young man says that this sweetness is called chocolate. The girl says that she is very sorry, but she is afraid that it will be difficult to exchange it for money. The young man says that, in that case, does not want to try one chocolate bar. 
If she likes it, he will give her the rest, but in return she will pay the registration fee. If she doesn't like it, he won't demand money for what she ate. The girl says she thinks one chocolate won't hurt her. The girl sniffs the chocolate and says that she has never felt such a smell before. The girl chews chocolate and feels nothing. But then she starts shaking all over and says it's just unbelievable. Sakurai says that he is glad that the girl liked it. The girl says that the chocolate began to melt instantly as soon as she put it in her mouth. Besides being a bit bitter, it's also sweet. The girl says that they have agreed and she will pay the registration fee and buy the rest. Sakurai thanks her for her help. Then the girl says if she can find out the young man's profession, as well as his fighting style. The young man says that he is a healer and he has invested most of his points in recovery and evasion. The girl fills out the papers that the young man is a healer and then his characteristics, but the pen flinches when she hears about the evasion. The girl asks if the young man is serious when talking about evasion. Sakurai asks the girl not to worry about recovery as well. The girl says that according to the young man, he is a healer who has invested very valuable points in evasion. The girl apologizes for being rude and asks if he has a band. The young man says that he is free. That is, one of the reasons why he came here was that he wanted to find allies. The girl says that then she is afraid that there is no one here who wants to take him into the group. The young man is surprised by this. The girl says, does she see? Healers who do not invest points in recovery are usually not very good as healers, and everyone knows this. Roughly speaking, no one needs them. The man says that a healer with evasion is the best build he could come up with. The girl says he should probably leave while he can. The young man says that he will register. Then he clarifies and says if he can find out from these people if he can join them. The girl gives a positive answer. The young man says he will talk to everyone. The girl wishes him good luck. The young man says that, if possible, he would like to go around the whole world. Then he should join a really strong group. He apologizes and approaches the group. He says he is now looking for a team to join. He asks if they need a healer. The man says that the guy has a very rare profession. Then the young man thinks that they seem to like him. Although this is not surprising, because the healer is in great demand everywhere. The man says it would be great. Then he asks if the young man has any experience in battles or working in a team. The young man says he doesn't have one, but then asks not to worry and says they won't have to protect him. The man asks what the young man wants to say. Sakurai says that he has a lot of points in evasion and he is sure that he will not receive any damage from attacks. The team freezes for a moment. The man apologizes for interrupting him, and then says that he doesn't think the young man can join them. Sakurai remains alone. He thinks that if only they could understand the greatness of evasion. However, nothing can be done. He should just find another team. After a while, he sees people sitting at a table. He introduces himself and says that he is a healer and is currently looking for a team. The man says that a healer is very cool. The girl adds that as he might have noticed, they consist only of vanguard fighters. The young man asks if he can join them. He thinks it's another good meeting. The girl asks what skills the young man can use, because it would be great if he also had a shield. The young man realizes that he does not have a shield. The young man says that he is new, so now he has only treatment and regeneration. The girl sighs, and the young man thinks that they may have changed their minds. The man says that as long as he has treatment, he thinks that everything is fine. However, in that case they need to change their formation. The young man says that this is not a problem, because, after all, he is a healer with evasion. This time, he's going to properly explain to them all the benefits of evasion. He says that since no attacks can harm a healer with evasion, there is no need to protect him and even if he takes damage, he can heal so they don't need to worry. Suddenly, the man stands up with a bang. They leave, and the man asks the young man to look for someone else. The girl says that in addition, they need another useless member of the team. Suddenly he notices an elf girl. He sees the huge luggage on the girl's back and thinks it's too big to be carried by an archer. He thinks that it was about her that the girl was talking when she called a team member useless. He assumed this, so he thinks he'll have to carry luggage for another team and maybe that's not a bad thing. He forgot that he wasn't very strong. He thinks he's really confident if it's for performance. He assumes that you need to find another team, that suddenly everyone started to disperse. Everyone has moved away from him and the young man thinks it's useless. Suddenly, the girl at the front desk calls him and says that he can still cancel the registration if he wants. The young man asks the girl if he knows where to find monsters. The girl says that he may stumble upon them outside the city or in the dungeon. The young man understands her words and says whether the girl could tell him where the nearest dungeon is. Then he asks to pick up a task for him that is not related to the destruction of monsters, if possible. The girl says that there are several tasks that she can give but she thinks that really he is going to go alone alone. 
it's too dangerous. That is, there are very strong monsters called bosses. The young man says that the girl should not worry, because he will just look there and that's it. He says he'll be fine. The girl thinks there is one task that will be safe enough for a beginner. The dungeon is called Stone, and it is located near the city. His task will be to bring some herbs from there. The guild will buy all the herbs it brings and there is no time limit on this task. The young man agrees to take it. The girl says that, in any case, although it is possible to complete the task without fighting, the young man will still be attacked by monsters. The young man runs away and says that he thinks he will be fine, so he ran. The girl tells the young man to be careful. Sakurai says he didn't know the sun was almost down. Normally he would still call it a day, but right now he is in dire need of money. Now he will go to the dungeon and collect herbs there, then he will sell it and rent a room with the money from the sale. Besides, he got some sleep in prison, so he thinks a night without sleep won't be a problem. Then he sees a stone dungeon. It looks like there's no one there. He thinks he'll just come in first. He goes inside the dungeon and says that he understands now. It's hard to find other words to properly describe it other than dungeon. He also notices good lighting inside, but he doesn't see any monsters and maybe he will meet them if he goes further. There were many who said goodbye to their lives because they took more than they could handle. Since he doesn't think he can resurrect, he should probably make a map of this place. The notebook he got from Ren is just right. He walks around the corner and notices a little monster there. This monster is a slug. Suddenly, he starts attacking the young man, but misses as he dodges the attack. The young man thinks that this is very cool, because a healer with evasion is too easy. Slugs should be pretty small fish, so he can beat one. He thinks he's just going to try to attack him. Then the young man swings his leg and kicks the monster to the side. However, the slug does not take damage. He forgot that he only has one point in attack. He's betting that he could easily defeat this monster if he dealt even a little damage. He should think more about his characteristics. He thinks that now he should give up the idea of killing the slug. He wonders if the slug will follow him as he walks through the dungeon. Suddenly he notices two slugs and thinks that everything will be fine if he leaves them alone. He doubts that they will interfere with him while he is collecting herbs. He needs money for a room and more for clothes, so he needs a lot of money before he can start his adventures. He may have to take out tons of this grass or he thinks he won't have enough. For a long time, the slugs continued to attack. His body by itself avoids all attacks. He had already forgotten that they were attacking him. Then the young man sees a ladder, but for some reason the slugs do not descend after him. The young man asks if they really can't leave their floor. If the monster's movement is limited only to their floor, it will be easier than he thought. Well, then he would go as deep as his evasion skill would allow. Then he is on the second floor, where he is attacked by unknown creatures that look like mice. On the third floor, he was attacked by monsters similar to wolves. On the eighth floor, they began attacking in mixed groups. Then the young man finds the grass that the girl was talking about. She showed him a book with herbs and said that, in general, there are two types of herbs growing in the dungeon. The first type is called analgesic herb, and the second, more valuable, medicinal herb. Just like the girl said, now is a great time to gather some grass. He collects plants and says that it seems that another kind of plant does not grow here. He decides to go further. Arriving at the 10th floor, he notices that the floor looks more majestic. Probably, he will be able to collect more grass here. It was only necessary to say, he found a medicinal herb, in addition, a whole bunch. He considers himself lucky. Suddenly he hears a loud sound. The young man wonders what it was. He asks himself what he should do and should he run away or should he trust evasion and go see. Then he realizes that he shouldn't run away. But still, he should be more careful. Yes, he will convince only when he gets the first damage, but until then he will go ahead. The young man looks out from around the corner, and then fear is described on his face. He thinks this monster is definitely on another level. He thinks it's a monster that looks like a damn horned bear. He decides to take a chance and go straight to the bear. He starts attacking the young man. He thinks he knew he was going to face something like this the moment he chose his evasion weapon. The monster makes a swing, but misses. After a few attacks, the young man still continued to dodge. The monster didn't understand why he couldn't get in. Sakurai says it's definitely unexpected or rather, he would never have thought it would be easy. He crunches his neck and prepares to continue collecting herbs. If you think about it, a bundle of medicinal herbs costs a thousand lots. He thinks he will earn a lot on this easy task. However, he doubts that it would be as easy if he fought him. There should be 20 bundles of grass and that should be enough to rent a room. He thinks it's worth it. Then he looks up and sees five horned bears who didn't understand why they couldn't hit the young man. He tries to run away and says it's not funny anymore. 
even if they can't hit him, but it's still scary. Suddenly, the young man notices the door. He thinks that there is probably a treasure room or, most likely, this is the entrance to the boss's room. He was already thinking about going back, but hadn't he already decided that he would go forward until he received damage? He thinks he can handle five bears with ease, so he thinks the dungeon boss will be fine. At this time, the bears also continued to aim at his head. Everything is fine and the young man decides to go into the treasury. He opens the door and apologizes for the intrusion. He looks around the room and thinks that this room literally screams that this is the boss's room. He looks at the monster and realizes that this monster is an orc. Such monsters are the first to appear in games, but seeing him as a boss like this scares a lot. He is afraid and thinks that this is a frightening situation and asks someone to give him a weapon with him. The monster strikes, but misses. The monster doesn't understand why he missed. The young man starts laughing and jumping around this orc. He sings a song and calls him baby, and also asks if he wants to win, and then asks him to come as you grow up. The young man says that he does not lose to him in general. Then he decides to see what they have here. Then the young man notices the passage. The orc, following the young man, gets stuck in a narrow passage. The young man thinks that, probably, in this world it is unthinkable to go through the boss's room without defeating him. He opens the door and sees a chest there. The young man rejoices and says that it is a treasure chest. He sees a magic circle right behind the chest and thinks it's probably a teleporter. He approaches the chest and says that it is, after all, an entry-level dungeon. He opens the chest and waits for the treasure. The young man sees a book inside. He thinks it may be a magical grimoire, or it may be inside the record of a great adventurer. He opens it and realizes that the book is empty. He decides to check again and realizes that it is really empty. He gets angry and asks if they are joking. He thinks it's garbage and asks for his expectations back. Then the young man thinks to get ready, because this is another world and maybe this book should be read in a special way. That is, in games, sometimes certain things are required to read the book, for example, to be the first to earn four medals. Anyway, he's just going to take it away now. Well, now, what he needs to do with the magic circle. He thinks it's a teleport and whether he should enter there or leave. A sign pops up, whether he agrees to enter the magic circle or not. The young man thinks that if he doesn't try, he won't know. He stands on the magic circle and begins to teleport somewhere. He noticed that he had moved directly to the entrance to the dungeon, and it was already morning. It's just unbelievable. His hands are shaking a little. He says that now he has to go back to the guild and show what he got. Suddenly, someone from the outside told Lucia to move. He looks around and says there are a lot of people here, from beginners to veterans. At this time, an elf jumps out, whom the young man met earlier. The young man thinks it's a little harder than playing games all night, but the experiment was a success. After a while, the young man comes to the adventurer's guild. He is met by a receptionist girl. She says she is very glad that he gave up the crazy idea of going alone. The young man says that he did not refuse. The girl says that, then, probably, along the way he found a team and joined. The young man says that's not quite true and he's here to exchange it. He puts the grass he has collected on the table. Suddenly, the receptionist screams and says that the young man has collected a lot of grass. Sakurai replies that this is indeed the case. The girl asks if this is not a medicinal herb, because it is incredibly difficult to get it. Besides, it's just perfect quality, as if the young man didn't even fight. He says it's because he didn't really fight. The girl says that it seems Sakurai has found a really strong group. He says he was alone and he got this herb using his evasion. He understands, looking at the girl, that she did not understand anything at all and his methods are really strange. After some time, after counting, the girl says that the young man collected 20 bundles of medicinal herbs and 10 bundles of analgesic herbs. Everything instead will cost 25,000 lots. The girl hands the young man a bag of money, and he thanks her. The young man thinks that with this he will be able to buy things. He rubs his face against his money. He also says that the young man has something interesting that might interest her. The girl asks what it is. The young man says that he found an empty book in the treasury. The girl doesn't understand anything. The young man shows her the book and says that its pages are just empty. The young man asks her. He thinks maybe she's speechless because it's just garbage. He also thought it was just trash. The girl starts to tremble and says that it just can't be. She holds a real skill book in her hands. The young man is also surprised by this. The young man says that really he will be able to get the skill, but isn't it empty? The girl says that it is empty, and the brown cover is the least valuable kind. But even so, this book is worth 10,000 lot. The young man asks if this is true, but the girl tells him that she is not joking. The girl is thinking of using or selling, that's the question. 
the young man says that of course to use. A new skill is much more valuable than money. The girl offers to teach him how to use this book. First he has to put his hand on the cover. The young man agrees. Then she says that the young man should use any skill he has. The book will absorb his mana, and he will get a new skill. Then the young man uses the treatment, and the aura from the book covers his entire body. Finally, the young man gets a new skill, a shield. He realizes that he has heard a voice in his head. He remembers a girl who said that if the young man had a shield, he would be able to relax. If he was in a group, this skill would be very useful, but he doesn't have a group. The girl asks if he got the skill. The young man says that he has acquired a new skill. The girl congratulates him, and the young man thanks her for it. The girl says that she thinks Hiroki will become a great adventurer, even though he tried to join the group all day yesterday. But he shows amazing growth. Then she approaches him suspiciously and says that those sweets called chocolate were very strange. She wonders what he is. The young man thinks to himself that he is one of the heroes summoned from another world. But he cannot say it, so he says that he is an ordinary guy from a neighboring country. From a country called Japan. He tells the girl that it's time for him to go, so he thanks her in the wake. She tells him that if the young man needs something, that he can come to her for advice. Now, before going to the hotel, he would like to try something. The young man feels a pleasant smell. Suddenly, a man from a retail store says that the man is really hungry. He has gorgeous kebabs here. The young man says that the man is right, because he spent the whole night in the dungeon without food and water. He'll take a couple of kebabs. The man says that one kebab costs 300 lot. The young man says he takes three pieces. The young man begins to eat juicy pieces of meat. He tells the man that these spices perfectly emphasize the taste of meat. This food is simply delicious. The man laughs and says he's right. Then he looks around the street and thinks that this place looks like a market. He also asks for juice from another ant and buys it for 300 lots. Then the young man sits down by the fountain and thinks that he needs to rest a little. Then the young man looks around at the people and remembers the words of the administrator's girl from the guild who said that almost everyone here is human. She said there aren't many beastmen here, but he thinks it's because it's a human kingdom. He wonders if the other kingdoms really have a mixed population too. The young man smiles and thinks that he is in another world, so he wants to learn more about its population. He wonders if there are high elves here. Although, if you think about it, that girl who was carrying a huge amount of things was an elf. Although he doubts it. If he met her again, he would definitely determine it. Now he decides to open the status. The young man really sees a new skill. He wants to check it out, so he decides to move away from the city. Then the young man returns to the drinks vendor to return the mug and thanks her. Another woman says, addressing the young man, that his clothes are quite unusual. The young man looks at his t-shirt and says that these clothes are from his homeland, and he thinks that he needs to buy new clothes. He approaches the woman and asks if she has simple clothes. The woman gives a positive answer. She says that the young man is still young, so these clothes will suit him. He examines the clothes and thinks that the fabric is kind of thin, but he will use it for recreation. Then the young man says that he would like to buy another bag. The woman says that altogether there will be 2,800 lots. After a while, the young man decides to test his skills. He goes outside the city and sees a slug in front of him. He thinks it's great and slugs are just right. The young man thinks that they have not changed and are still cheerful. He wants to make pets out of them. Then the young man uses his new shield skill and a layer of light appeared around his body. He invites the slugs to admire his shield together. The slug attacks, but the monsters miss. It turns out that he always dodges and can't check the shield. He wonders if the shield will be of any use. He can't go home like this while he's glowing. He thinks that the shield will work until the enemy hits it. He wonders if there is anyone stronger here. The young man hears the sound and thinks that there are newcomers there. He sees a young man and a girl and realizes that they are Tina and Dinah. He's wondering what to do with Floyd at this moment. It doesn't look like he's anywhere near. Dine attacks with a sword, but misses, and the girl uses fire magic. Sakurai thinks they're just training. It seems to him that they are trying to raise their levels, but do they really need to put so much effort, although he does not know the norms of this world. Then the slug attacks and hits Dane directly, which the young man falls. Sakurai is scared of this. The slug then attacks Tina. The young man thinks he should help her, and then immediately uses the shield. Suddenly, a layer of light appears around the girl, and the slug bounces off it. The girl is surprised, and the young man realizes that his skill also works for others. Dine shouts at the girl to attack. The girl agrees and uses her ability to summon fire. The slug is dying. Dine sighs and says they did it somehow. The young man sighs with relief and says that now it's time to leave quietly. 
Then the girl notices something shining in the bushes and calls Hiroki. The young man comes out of the bushes. The girl says that it really was Hiroki who saved them and she thanks him. Dane also rejoices at the young man. The young man greets the girl, and he thinks that he is very glad that he saved them. Dain says he can just call them by their first names. The young man asks if they are sure, to which Tina replies that she agrees. The young man says he thinks it's a little difficult with someone older than you, but they can just call him Hiroka. Dain asks about the age and says, aren't they the same age? He says he's 15, and Tina says she's 13. Sakurai says he's 19. They are very surprised. Sakurai thinks that he looks younger than his years and this is problematic. Dain says it's amazing because they're about the same height, so he thought they were about the same age. Then Dane starts screaming that Hiroki is in danger. There were several slugs next to the young man. Tina shouts that there are three slugs with him, and Dain asks him why he is standing, and not running away or defending himself. Hiroki says he'll be fine. At this moment, Dain shouts for him to turn around. However, the slug misses. Daina and Tina are surprised by what they have just seen. They wonder if the slug really missed. Sakurai says that he actually dodged. Dain says his body is definitely swaying, but is it really dodging? The young man says that this is it. The young man says that thanks to this, he even got a skill book. Dain asks if it was really possible. The young man is confused and asks if they could help him kill them. He lacks strength and it's a little annoying. Dain comes to her senses and agrees. Hiroki says it's wonderful and if they kill them, they will help him a lot. After a while, Dain and Tina help Hiroki deal with the slugs. As he thought, being in a band is great. He wants to get his band together as soon as possible. Finally, they dealt with all the slugs. Sakurai said he was glad to have met them. He was a little sad because he couldn't hit them at all. Dina and Tina are exhausted. The young man said it wasn't a problem. Tina said she was out of mana. The young man asked the girl how she was and said that he would cure her now. Tina said she was fine and didn't get a scratch and it was all thanks to his shield. She's just a little tired because she spent all her mana. The young man thought that if you use a lot of skills or spells, you will get tired. Then he offers them some rest. Sakurai says that using the shield is a bit problematic, because once it is activated, it starts to glow. Tina replies that maybe he used it in a hurry and forgot to set it up. The young man asks about the setting, and Tina replies that in her case, she can control the power of her spells with the amount of mana spent on their use. The young man asks what about his shield. The girl says that usually the shield protects against 5 blows, but by reducing the number of blows, you can increase the strength of the shield. The young man understands and thinks that he should try. He should imagine a shield protecting him and Tina. A shield for 5 strikes, but not shining. He uses a shield and suddenly the glow disappears. He realizes that the glow is really gone. The girl asks if everything is okay if he protects her with a shield, too. The young man asks what is wrong. The girl says that just the power of the shield will be distributed to the two of them. Sakurai says that in this case there is no problem. Dain says that the young man is very strange. Sakurai asks why, and Dane replies that he is much stronger than them, but, nevertheless, he does not know the basic things. The young man says that he hasn't slept at all since yesterday. Sakurai says that after that he thought of going to look for a hotel. Dain says that he advises him to stay at the Shooting Star Hotel. There are clean rooms and, more importantly, excellent food. He says they're staying there too. Floyd is probably still sleeping after getting drunk. He is a clear example of a hopeless adult. Then Sakurai says it's great, and then asks why they keep sitting here then. He suggests they go to a hotel. The young man tells Tina to get on his back, and he will carry her. The girl starts to get embarrassed and says that she is fine and they wanted to hunt a little more. The young man says, because the girl has run out of MAGA. Tina says that while they rested, she recovered a little. The young man says that, in that case, he will go first. He offers to see them at the hotel. Tina says they'll see each other. After a while, Dain says that Hiroki is just incredible. The girl says that it is. She had never seen anyone fight like this before. After a while, near the Shooting Star Hotel, Tina and Dinah return in the evening, and the next morning Floyd took them on an adventure search. At this time, the young man wakes up. He goes downstairs and says good morning to everyone. The woman who cleaned the dishes said that she was sure that the young man slept like a dead man. Sakurai says that he is sure that he fell asleep in the morning, but then why is it still noon? The woman says that he actually slept the whole day. The young man says that he should have guessed and it is not surprising that his body is full of strength. The woman says that the young man must have been very exhausted yesterday. The woman brings the young man his free tomorrow. Sakurai says he looks amazing. He starts having breakfast and says it's just delicious and he's never eaten anything like it. The woman asks if he is really Floyd's friend. The young man agrees and says that they are very kind to him. 
The woman says that this is not surprising, because Floyd is quite annoying. The young man asks if Floyd's group really stayed at this hotel. The woman says that they are private guests in this hotel, but, unfortunately, they have recently left. She had heard that the young man was a novice. She gives him another dish and says it's on the house. The woman says that the young man should not be shy and if he is not sure about something, then he can turn to her. She will do her best to help. The young man thanks her. In this case, the young man asks if there is a store selling equipment nearby. The girl says that she knows a great store very well. She asks for a minute to draw him a map. The young man eats dessert and says that it's just wonderful, and they will show him a great store. Then he comes to the store and says that the building looks very good and has proven itself perfectly. The young man goes inside. He says that everything inside also looks quite exquisite. In addition, the goods here are also very attractive. He is met by a man, and the young man was very surprised that the man is a dwarf. The man says that the young man has a strange outfit. He sees an adventurer and asks what the young man's class is. The young man says that he is a healer. Sakurai smiles and says that he is looking for comfortable clothes in which it will be convenient to dodge. The man asks why he is looking for this. The young man says it's because he put all his points into dodging. In fact, he believes that a healer who can dodge any attack is the best. He asks if the man thinks so. The man says that the young man is really very strange. But, unfortunately, no team wants to accept him and he really thought it was a great idea. The man is ready to bet that the young man made the biggest mistake in his life. The man says that it was necessary for the young man to play with his characteristics like that. He thinks that the young man should forget about becoming an adventurer. Sakurai denies and says that he doesn't regret a bit that he spent everything on evasion. The man asks that even though no team will accept him and what he will achieve alone. The young man says he doesn't care even if he is alone. It seems that he has already prepared for the worst. The man says that he was sure that one day he would meet someone who would understand him. The old man will root for the young man. Sakurai rejoices. Then the man says that, to be honest, he also thinks that the young man's idea of evasion is not so bad. Just like them, the monsters will only get stronger and stronger. They will adapt, and when they meet heavily armored adventurers, they will fight even more fiercely. However, he doubts that there will be many monsters capable of resisting clever adventurers. The young man believes that this is true. Even if you are a high-level adventurer, if you don't invest points, your evasion will always be the same. Then the man asks the young man how much money he has. He says he has something like 15,000 lots. The man says that this is enough for him only for something not enchanted equipment. For enchanted items, you need at least 50,000 lots. The young man asks about the enchanted things and asks if it is not the equipment that increases your characteristics, like what they use when forging. The man says it is. He asks if the young man knows that they, the dwarves, are the best at blacksmithing. The young man begins to shine and thinks that he knew that he was a real dwarf. But more importantly, he didn't know there was enchanted equipment here. The man says that the young man should try to touch them. He will understand what the man is talking about. The young man touches and sees what the armor has plus three points to protect. The young man asks if the man has anything that increases evasion. The man asked if the young man really thought he had such stuff. Sakurai asked again, but the man replied so that the man would not look at him like that. The man says it's too early to give up. If there is no such thing, he will just do it for him on purpose. The young man says that he understood and then he will earn some money. He asks the man if this will suit him. The man says he doesn't mind it. The young man thanks the man and asks if he needs 50,000 lots. The man tries to grab the young man and stop him, but misses. The young man turns around. The man says that he has enough money for non-enchanted equipment, so he suggests that he go and choose it. He will be able to enchant him to evade later when the young man has saved up money. He calls him to follow him. The young man agrees. He shows him different equipment and asks if he likes it. The young man asks if the man really did it himself. The man says that this equipment was made by his niece. They often quarrel, as their views differ greatly on whether to give priority to design or functionality. The young man notices the suit and asks the man at what price it will be. The man says that actually it costs more than 15,000 lots, but he will give him a discount. The young man rejoices. He offers the young man to try it on. He puts it on and says it's like it's made for him. The man laughs and says that the young man does not look like a healer at all. The young man says he is sorry, but he has no desire to lie about his class. However, again, he pretends to be a healer when in fact he is a priest. Then he thanks the man for everything. He says he will go and collect more herbs, so he will have money soon. 
The man asks about herbs, and then clarifies whether the young man collects them in a slug cave. Sakurai clarifies about the slug cave. The man is surprised that the young man did not know about her. This is a dungeon where there is no one but slugs, but besides that there are many different herbs growing there. The young man says it sounds like there's a gold mine there. The man says that everyone thinks so at first, however, slugs attack in such numbers that there is no time to collect herbs. The young man says it sounds interesting. He asks the man to tell him exactly where this dungeon is located. He says that of course he will, but asks him not to tempt fate. At least once a year, some newcomers die there. The young man is surprised by this, to which the man says that it is better for him to abandon this idea. The young man says that he will be fine and he is confident in his evasion. A man says that a man is really confident in himself. In any case, he should only collect herbs near the entrance. He gives the man money, and the man thanks the young man for the purchase. Then the man notices the jewelry. The man asks if he is also interested in accessories. The young man denies this, and then asks if by chance the man has accessories for concluding contracts. The man apologizes and says that it is incredibly difficult to find such a thing here. The young man says that he is simply looking for a way to destroy such a contract. The man apologizes and says that he has never heard of such a thing. The young man with a sad expression on his face thanks for the help, and then says that, in that case, he will go to the slug cave. The man asks not to forget his advice, and that he does not even try to go inside the cave. Then the young man notices the signs and, most likely, these signs are warning signs, although he does not know what is written there. He thanks people and so, with their help, he can easily find the cave. However, there are a lot of them. Then he sees the mountain and assumes that the cave is here, but it doesn't look dangerous at all. Then they see wild animals that drink water from the river, and nearby there were slugs that splashed in the water. The young man says that it is very visible. Then he turns around and says it's time to go inside. He enters the cave of slimes on the first floor and says that he immediately found several slimes. Slimes begin to attack the young man, but miss. They don't understand why their attack didn't go through. Meanwhile, the young man went on. He inspects the area and says that this cave is really full of herbs. He starts collecting herbs and says that the dwarf man did not lie and this is really the best place to collect herbs. He also didn't lie about the number of slimes. He looks around and sees that there are already five slimes. They jumped around him and tried to attack. He rubs his chin and says that somehow, apart from the painkiller herb, he couldn't find anything on this floor. He thinks about whether he should go lower. The young man remembers the words of the man who told him to collect grass only near the entrance. The hero really wants to keep his promise, but here he will not be able to achieve great success. He needs 50,000 lot to enchant the armor, and even though he has already paid for a night at the hotel, so he does not have enough money for another day. Collecting only analgesic grass, he would never be able to earn that kind of money. Also, despite the fact that he bought these clothes extremely profitably, but now he doesn't have a single penny to his soul. The young man looks at his bag, where the money should be, but it's already empty. In other words, he has no choice but to go down to the floor with the medicinal herb. Fortunately, the slimes can't follow him to the next floor. In any case, he needs to find a ladder as soon as possible. But suddenly in a short time there are already ten of them and it starts to strain. Ahead, the young man notices another large group of slimes. He realizes that there are a lot more of them than he expected. Including those already near him, there will be about 20 of them. He wouldn't be surprised if, with so many slimes, he couldn't dodge. However, he has no other choice but to move on. Because now the most important thing for him is to earn. Finally he found a ladder. He thinks it wasn't that hard to find her. Suddenly, the young man stopped and thought that he still did not know the limits of his evasion. Although he could dodge boss attacks in the stone dungeon, but he still doesn't know how good he is. He can dodge. The young man is surrounded by a huge number of slimes that cannot damage him in any way, and even hit him in general. He says now is the right time to find out. Besides, he wants to know exactly how many slimes he can dodge. It's time to experiment. He understands that he should try not to go too far from the stairs. He also wonders where the slimes come from at all. If these are slimes, then could it be that they are able to just endlessly share? Then he thinks about the fact that they are even now multiplying by division. Then he notices how everything around him has begun to blur. He wondered why. He then suggests that it might be because of the shield. He remembers how Tina told him that usually the shield protects against 5 blows, but by reducing the number of blows, you can increase the strength of the shield. So the shield is still active, even though he put it on himself yesterday or even the day before yesterday. But what's more important is that his shield has activated, which means he can't dodge anymore and that's the limit. There are about 30 slimes here and it looks like it's not so easy to dodge all of them. 
Besides, he doesn't want to end up like the adventurers the dwarf told him about. Now it's time to finish the experiment. He does not have time to finish, as he decides to turn around and sees a huge number of slimes. The young man is very scared. There was an unrealistically large number of slimes behind him. They start attacking the young man and it turns out that his evasion does not work. The young man is getting hurt. The slime attacks are stronger than he imagined. The young man uses the treatment and shield, and then runs straight to the stairs. He has to get out of here. He turns around and can't figure out how many slimes are gathered here. Although they are very cute, but he is absolutely sure that this sound from the slimes will give him nightmares. He runs up to the stairs and jumps down on the steps. Slimes can't go down the steps. The young man sits down on the steps and tries to catch his breath. He was very scared. He thinks that now he knows what the limit of his evasion is now. Still, he shouldn't have underestimated the slimes. But instead, he accidentally created an entire cave full of slimes. Then the young man goes to the second floor of the cave and says that it is quite strange that since he went down to this floor, he has not seen a single slime and there is only medicinal herb here. Then he hears a sound characteristic of slimes and says that he has finally stumbled upon them. But then he notices a slime that has a rather strange appearance. He understands that slime looks somehow different. He's trying to figure out if it's his ears or his hands. Suddenly slime jumps up. The young man realizes that it turns out to be wings. He understands that this slime is very cute. Then the young man sees that slime is very tense and he realizes that the monster is using the skill. The young man is surprised by this and then something hits from above. The young man tries to jump away, but he realizes that he cannot move. He gets scared and thinks he's paralyzed right now. The young man falls in the position in which he fell and decides to use the healing skill, but it turns out that the skill does not remove the effect of paralysis. It seems that in order to remove debuffs, another spell is needed. As soon as he comes to town, he will definitely need to buy something from this. The young man is trying to figure out what such a strong slime is doing on the second floor. Then suddenly slime starts attacking. He tries to keep his calm because his shield is still activated. Suddenly slime attacks, suddenly slime misses, and the young man tries to figure out what happened. For some reason, the young man feels like a tree dancing to the right and left from a light breeze. He thinks about how strong his evasion is. Slime starts to attack, but the young man lying down evades. After a while, slime was exhausted. The young man asks evasion to see what it has done. Poor slime's pride was completely trampled. But as much as he would like to feel sorry for this slime, the effect of paralysis is almost over. Once that happens, he will win this battle. At this time, Slime takes off into the air again and uses his skill at full power. He hits the young man again and he says that really again. So he was just waiting for the debuff effect to weaken. Slime thought that this time he would definitely succeed and he cheered up. The young man thinks that it really will last forever. Then the only thing that awaits the young man is starvation. He shouts that he won't let this happen, but even so, he doesn't have the ability to attack Slime. Then what should he do? Then the young man sees someone in the distance. People say they need to stop because it's too dangerous here. The other person says it's fine. The main character understands that someone is here. He is very happy, and then he shouts, calling for someone to help him. These people turned out to be Floyd, Diane and Tina. The girl is the first to notice Hiroki and calls him. Floyd asked if it was really Hiroki. The young man called Tina, Dinah and Floyd and even started crying. He says it looks like he and Floyd were able to get here. He says that Floyd will be blessed by his god. The man asks what the young man is doing here alone, because it is very dangerous here. Floyd started asking the recumbent Sakurai if he was okay. The young man replied that he was hardly alright. Then the young man shouted to Floyd to be careful, because this slime can fly. The man realized that it was this slime that defeated Hiroku. Only it seemed to him that this slime was a little too much for him. Floyd told Hiroka not to worry, because they would take care of him now. He tells Dinah to check the neighborhood and Tina to use fire. The young man and the girl took commands. Suddenly, a slug started attacking Sakurai. Floyd yells at him to be careful, but the young man deftly evades. Floyd froze for a second and didn't understand how he could dodge. Dine said that the young man actually sees it for the first time. Tina said that Hiroki is a real master of evasion and Dine called the young man very strange. The man looked at the slug, which was struggling and crying because it could not hit the young man. The man said that they would tell him about everything later. And to begin with, he lunges and says that they need to knock out some mucus. He swings and attacks the slug. He bounces off, and Tina attacks with a fire spell at this moment. The man strikes the slug again and tells him not to even think about attacking Hiroki. The slug is thrown from side to side. He simultaneously attacks Hiroki, but the young man continues to dodge. 
He thinks that despite the damage received, the slug still remains alive. The young man realizes that he seems to have underestimated him. The slug keeps trying to attack people. At one point, it will fly off in the direction of Floyd. The man is scared to dodge, but the slug attacks him. Hiroki looks at it all and uses the healing ability. A pleasant aura envelops Floyd's body. The man thanks the young man for his help and treatment. Then the man attacks the slug. He flies off to the side. The slug falls to the ground and does not get up again. Finally, the flying slime was defeated. Dinah and Tina are happy that they have coped. Floyd approaches the young man and helps him turn over. The main character thanks them for their help. Floyd is happy that everything is fine with the young man. Floyd takes the young man on his shoulder and says that he is now returning. After a while, Tina gives Sakurai a paralysis potion and asks how he feels. Suddenly, the young man jumps from the fact that the potion turned out to be very bitter. Floyd offers to give him some water. The young man laughs and thanks the guys for their help. Dian says that since the young man jumps up so much, then everything is already fine with him. In any case, he is incredibly happy to see them all, because he already thought that he would die there. Tina says that Dine really wanted to go to the lower floors, even though she was very scared, but still she is glad that they went here. Sakurai turns to Dane and thanks him. The young man replies that he did nothing in that battle, but Sakurai says that Dane was very useful. Sakurai says that this cave is a very dangerous place, so why did they come here? Dane says whether the young man knew that the lower levels of this cave, it is an ideal place to train in a battle with several opponents. Sakurai recalls that the slimes just above are simply incredible. Floyd asks about it. Then they look at the top of the stairs and there are a huge number of slimes that cannot go further on the steps. The young man apologizes to Floyd, Dana and Tina and says that while he was running away, these guys continued to chase him, but they probably came here first. Dine is very surprised by this. Floyd asks why he didn't just kill them, and he also moved strangely when dodging slimes. Dine says Hiroki can dodge almost any attack, but he can't do any damage. Floyd is surprised by all this. He asks the young man if he really came to such a dangerous place, despite the fact that he can't kill anyone. He starts laughing very hard at Sakurai. The young man asks what else he had to do because no one will take him to his team after he tells them that he invested all the points in evasion. He keeps laughing and says it's too funny. Tina says Floyd is laughing too loudly. Dine points to a pile of slugs and asks if it doesn't look like a slime buffet. Floyd also looks at them and says that maybe as long as they are standing on the stairs, they can't attack them, but there are quite a lot of them there. Dine says that in that case, they won't be able to get out of here. He intervenes and invites them all to do it together. Floyd pulls out his sword and says there's nothing to be done and suggests they do it. Tina also tells them to wait, and then offers to give the bracelet to Hirok as well. The young man asks what kind of bracelet we are talking about. Dine laughs and points out that the young man has started talking like a complete beginner again. Tina explains that she is talking about the band's bracelet. As long as they wear this bracelet, all the points they earn will be distributed equally. He puts it on and says that this bracelet is the same as Tina's. Dine says she and Floyd have bracelets under their gloves, too. The young man thinks that with this he will finally be able to get some experience. Then Floyd puts the sword on his shoulder and invites them all to start lighting up. Dine was also ready to fight. The young man uses a shield even on Floyd and Dinah. Dane thanks Sakurai. The young man replies that it's just nothing. After a while, notifications began to appear that the slimes had been defeated. Dine says the slimes ended faster than he thought. Floyd said most of them ran away altogether. They apologized to Hiroki for getting much less experience than they expected. The young man says that they helped him a lot. Thanks to them, he was able to get the second level. Dine starts screaming and asks if the young man was wrong, saying that he got the second level. Sakurai is surprised and says that maybe he was wrong. Floyd smiles at the young man and tells him if he really wants to join them. Sakurai is surprised by this. Tina says it's a great idea. Sakurai asks if they are really sure about this, because he is a healer with evasion. Floyd says he's sure of it and why not. Sakurai also says that he has problems with his head. Dine asks, so what? Tina rejoices and tells Hiroki that they can become stronger and so they can learn much more about their world. The young man is surprised by the girl's words and smiles. Sakurai asks Dinah, Tina and Floyd to take care of him. Everyone starts shouting enthusiastically. Floyd says now is the time to have a drink. He suggests that the guys, as soon as they return, arrange a welcome party for Hiroki. Tina tells Floyd that he's already too drunk. Dine says he's at it again. The main character thinks that he will not get bored with them. Then he rustles in his clothes and takes out a handkerchief and a notebook with a pen. 
He remembers Ran and Rory, and then looks at his new teammates. The young man thought that they would create a team together, but joining Floyd, Tina and Dinah is not such a bad option. After a while, Dine says it's time to continue their hunt. Tina agrees. Soon the team made their own band building. Dine was in the vanguard and went ahead of everyone. Behind him was Tina in the role of a rearguard, that is, an attack. Sakurai and Floyd followed. Sakurai was in the role of rearguard and healer, and Floyd was the guard. The young man thinks it makes sense, although he is not sure that there is usually a guard in the group. The young man counted the number of blows, how much the shield would withstand and used it as he recovered. He's certainly glad they let him join, but he's invested all his points in dodging to make the hunt more effective. And in the ranks, when they can't advance until they've defeated all the enemies, he feels absolutely useless. It would be more effective if he acted as bait, and Dine and Tina attacked right on the move. Then the young man calls Dinah and says, isn't he tired? Sakurai suggests that he switch and go ahead. Dine says it's too dangerous for someone like him. The young man says that Dine knows perfectly well that he will be able to evade everything. Dine says he's fine and just leave it to him. Dine tells Hiroki to listen to him carefully. The vanguard is his responsibility. Even if he can dodge, he still has to protect everyone. He asks if the young man really thinks he is so unreliable. Sakurai says that he understood everything. It seems to Floyd that the young man feels a little out of place. He thinks the young man has joined a pretty strong group. Sakurai laughs awkwardly. Even so, they should have already seen how useful his shield and evasion were, but it was just as he thought. In that case, it's exactly the same as if they completely denied the usefulness of his build. The young man felt something and involuntarily raised his leg. He was surprised by this. It turns out that a slug aimed at his leg, but missed. Floyd laughed at that. He said that the young man really can evade anything. The young man laughs and tells the slug, calling him Monsieur, that he is too persistent, because they barely know them. Dine noticed this and asked the young man to be careful. He jumped towards him and started moving with the sword towards the youth. Dane asks Hiroki what he is doing and asks him not to interfere. Sakurai says that Tina is also in the rear guard. Dine said it was, of course. At that moment, the slug attacked Tina and the girl screamed. Sakurai asks Dane to look in Tina's direction. The young man immediately rushed to her and asked her to be careful. Sakurai asks him to be careful. Sakurai said that Tina would be fine, because he put a shield on everyone. Dai looks at Tina. The slug attacks her, but he fails to deal damage to it, because the shield is located on the girl. Floyd turns to Dean and says that it looks like he's the only one who needs to cool down a little. Dine says having a healer is so convenient. Tina says Hiroki is incredible. The young man is embarrassed and says that it's not like that at all. Sakurai says they haven't defeated those slimes yet, so they shouldn't let their shields collapse. Tina and Dinah are surprised by this, and Floyd sighs and smiles. A little later, in the evening, at the Shooting Star Hotel, the young man was lying on the table and says that he was very tired. Dine was also lying on the table and apologizing to Hiroki that for some reason he couldn't fight at full strength. Sakurai thinks it's not surprising, because even after that they continued to argue. Sakurai said, apologizing, that Dine should try harder next time. Dine shouted that next time he would give his all. Sakurai told the young man not to overwork too much. Anyway, he's just a nice guy. Floyd suggests they forget about it and have a drink together. The young man thanks him. Floyd drinks to the new member of their group, Hiroki. They all clink mugs of hot drinks. Floyd offers Sakurai to drink to the bottom. The young man says that he can't drink strong drinks yet. The woman who works at the tavern says whether Floyd knows that not only strong drinks are good in their hotel. Floyd is glad she finally came. Dine says this food is worth the money and Madame is the best. Floyd starts laughing, and Sakurai and Tina start eating. Floyd then asks if Sakurai has heard rumors that there is a hero in this kingdom. The young man was surprised that rumors had already started about Rene. After Floyd asked if Sakurai knew that there was a hero in this kingdom, the man said that probably everyone wants to meet him at least once. Sakurai realized that, really, there had already been rumors about Rene. They were called up just a few days ago. The young man asked Floyd where he heard about it. Floyd asks if Hiroki is really interested in the hero too. Hiroki said it was something like this. Dine replied that it was of course, that is, every child would like to become a hero. Although this is not something he can talk about, but he was also called together with this hero. Dine says that he has heard that the hero is now trying to raise the level. Sakurai is surprised by this. Recently, he went to a very dangerous dungeon. There were a lot of traps and monsters with various debuffs. Floyd says that moreover, he also heard that a strong curse was put on him. The young man is surprised by this word curse. Floyd says he hopes the hero took that terribly expensive cleansing potion with him. Then he falls asleep. 
Tina says that's how she knew Floyd would fall asleep again. Dine turns to Hiroki and tells him to just ignore him. He always drinks, despite the fact that he gets drunk so easily. Then they are going to continue their welcome party. Everyone agrees, but this time the glasses were full of juice. Some time later, the same night, the young man left the hotel. He went to the stone cave. Why did he go to the dungeon so late at night? The young man realized that everything was simple, he didn't have a penny left. The young man sighs and thinks that while he is crawling here and collecting grass, Ren and Ruri are raising levels in dangerous dungeons. They should have gotten bonus points after the draft, too, and they should be fine. But he doesn't think they're the kind of people who would recklessly risk their lives. It must have been the king who forced them to do this. A young man understands that he needs to become stronger, and for this he must raise the level. Then he remembered that as soon as he thought about it, he would get the second level in the afternoon. Sakurai reveals his status, then he notices his second level, as well as the extra point he got for the level. Now he understands that it is not surprising that healers who spend points not on recovery are just garbage. Usually, before getting the title of master, everyone focuses on one skill. But to get it, you need to invest 50 points in the skill. He is glad that he did not tell about his characteristics. Most likely, they would perceive him as some kind of monster, because evasion and recovery give a total of 150 points. The next morning, the young man returns to the hotel and sees Floyd there, who had a splitting headache after yesterday. He apologized to the young man and said that he was passing today. Dine wishes good morning to the guys. Floyd was coming up the stairs saying that he would leave everything to Dinah. Sakurai says Floyd looks really bad, maybe he should be helped. Dine says there's nothing wrong, he's always like that, so he suggests we go from here. Tina approaches the main character and asks if everything is okay with him. The young man asks what the girl means. Tina asks if the young man had a good rest last night. Sakurai laughs and thinks that there is not a minute of sleep. Then he asks if they can go to the guild first. Dine says that everything is fine and they still need to take a couple of tasks. After a while they come to the capital guild. The girl at the reception desk said that the Sakurai grass is of excellent quality as always. She asks if the young man has seen the bulletin board and says that a message was left for him. The young man is interested in what message the girl is talking about. She confirms and says that it was left by a certain Rory. The young man remembers about the girl and that they agreed to call their names. Rory is a high school student who was called into this world together with the main character. Rory is a real lady, so she and Ren decided to protect her. The girl at the front desk is reading a letter. The girl calls Hiroki dear and says she will be waiting for him in two days at Plum Bar. Since the message was left yesterday, the meeting should take place tomorrow night. Come to think of it, she's asking for a meeting so soon that something bad really happened. Tina asked the young man if he was ready to go. The young man said that he was already on his way. After a while, the group arrived at the stone cave. Tina said this was their first trip to the dungeon without Floyd. Dine said that everything would be fine with them, because Hiroki was nearby. The young man apologizes and says that he is not that good. The young man uses a shield, putting it on Tina and Dinah. Dine thanks the main character for his protection. The young man says that although he was here at night, he went here again. He decides to mark this place on the map, but suddenly he is surprised. He saw a path and realized that it was the shortest way to the stairs. Suddenly, Dine says that he has found something. Then they come to the stairs on the second floor. Tina says you can't go there because it's too dangerous to go to the second floor alone. Dine says he thinks everything is fine and besides, don't they need to practice yesterday's formation? The young man is surprised by his words. He smiles and says that in that case they will do it. Tina says Hiroki goes there too. Dine says it's all amazing and then suggests they go ahead. On the second floor they met mice, which the main character had already met on the floor. Dine attacked and notifications appeared that the wild rat had been defeated. At this time, the young man notices that one of the wild rats is heading straight to Tina and Sakurai. He tisks and at this moment evades one mouse. At this time, the mouse that attacked Sakurai could not hit the young man and missed. Tina used fire magic and attacked the opponent. Sakurai said that Dane and Tina are great. Now they are slowly but surely honing their teamwork, so he is sure that in the future they will become a great team. Dane tells Hiroki that they will advance after killing all the enemies. He asks if he understands everything correctly. A notification arrives that all the rats have been defeated. Sakurai says that Dane was just great. Suddenly, Dine notices that a quest item has fallen from these mice. Suddenly a man walks by and shouts to Lucia to drag her legs here faster. Dane, Tina and Sakurai paid attention to them. The man approached the young man and said, isn't he the healer who approached them earlier? Sakurai greets him. The man says that he was still able to find a team, so much the better for him. He then examines Dane, Tina, 
and Sakurai. Then he says they're going to the lower floors, but what about them? A girl comes up to him and tells him to stop teasing the poor boy. Then an elf with a lot of luggage comes up to them. They leave, and the girl says that they will see each other on the next floor if they don't get cold feet. The young man recognizes the girl as a real elf. Sakurai's acquaintances leave. Dinah and Tina ask if Hiroki really knows them. The young man replies that it's not that they know each other, just exchanged a few words in the guild. Tina said it was a strong team. Dine replies that it's nothing special, but they're just a bunch of stupid people. They spent the whole day on the second floor hunting rats. The next day, they honed their teamwork together with a fully recovered Floyd. After sunset, the young man said goodbye to Floyd, Dinah and Tina. He said he still had things to do, so they could leave first. After a while, the young man comes to the plum bar. Rory's girlfriend was waiting for him. She saw the young man and greeted him, telling him to come here. The young man also greets the girl. Everyone in the bar paid attention to him. They called him a guy and said he had come. The young man at that moment asked if she had been waiting for him for a long time. The girl replied that she had just arrived. The girl asked how the young man was doing. Although, judging by his new clothes, he was doing well. Sakurai replied that everything was fine. He had earned a lot by completing tasks to collect herbs. Men who had already drunk were sitting in the bar, who were carefully watching the girl and the young man. Sakurai asked what about Rory. He's heard some rumors about them here. They say the hero raises the level in very dangerous dungeons. He also heard that there are monsters in them that can cast very strong curses. He asks them to be careful. The girl sat silently. Sakurai wondered why she was silent and just don't say he's right. The girl made a serious expression on her face and told Hiroki that this very curse was put on Ren. After that, a spot appeared on Ren's body similar to a snake trail. It's not that bad right now, but the curse will slowly consume his body and eventually it will kill him. Moreover, the purification potion had no effect and they have no idea how to remove this curse. The young man repeated that this curse would kill him. The girl said that it was even worse. Even though the king said he was looking for a cure, in fact he was not doing anything. She was also trying to find a cure. She searched the royal library, asked all the scientists she could find. But unfortunately, she didn't find anything. Sakurai replied that he understood everything. He will try to ask the guild and other adventurers. The girl thanked him. He asks not to thank him, because he would never let Ren die. The girl said that, like her, the three of them came into this world, and the three of them will also return home. Hiroki asked if Rory was tired of this bad king. The girl replied that everything was fine. Right now, the king only ordered them to raise their levels. They want to become stronger themselves, so it's not so bad, because at the moment their interests coincide. The young man asked what the girl's current level was. She sits down next to him and reveals her status. She asks him to look for himself. The young man is surprised by what he sees. Her characteristics were on top. For example, magic had 18 points and defense had 60. The girl says that she still hunted with Ren. The girl asks him not to worry because he will soon catch up with them. The young man said that he would do his best. He realized that it looked like the girl had also gained some new skills. Suddenly drunk men approach them. They call the young man a cute schoolboy and ask if he is having a good time. The second one asks to join them. Ruri and Sakurai were about to get up and leave, but one of the men bent down to the girl and called her young miss. He asks her not to be such a bore and to play with him a little. Suddenly Sakurai appeared between them and shielded the girl with his body. He asked them to stop. The men didn't understand what he was trying to do. The man swung and shouted to the young man to go far away from here. Then Sakurai dodged. A second blow followed, but the young man also dodged this attack with dexterity. The girl put the bag of money on the table and told Hiroki to get out of here. The young man agreed, but the man asked where the young miss was going. They looked at the girl with a disgusting smile and asked why she was so cold to them and whether the girl loves bad boys. Two men rushed at her, but the girl used an earth spell and suddenly something alive wrapped around the men's legs, and then she used a wind spell that tore off the men's clothes. The girl says that, in comparison with her kids, these guys are like two little puppies. Sakurai was very surprised at this moment and asked the girl about her kids. Rory asked if she had said that. Sakurai thought that Rory was another fragile girl that they had to protect, but perhaps she was the most dangerous of the three of them. A young man walked down the street and thought about Rory's words when she said that Ren was cursed by a monster. He thinks that if nothing is done, he will die within a few months. He thinks Ren is in trouble again. The next morning, Floyd asks Sakurai again when he asks about how to remove the curse and asks if the young man does not know. The man says that there are potions for this. They are divided into basic, standard and advanced, that is, there are three different types of them. 
Sakurai asks if there are potions better than advanced ones, to which Floyd replies that such can be found in dungeons, in chests, or ordered from the scientific academy. Although the ingredients are extremely difficult to get, so it's almost impossible to order them. The young man thinks about chests or the academy. The chests are empty until you kill the boss, so he will not be able to farm these chests. He was convinced of this while collecting medicinal herbs. And, according to Ruri, nothing else will help. Floyd says that perhaps demons have made progress in research on removing curses. The young man asks about these demons. Floyd says demons are usually better at magic and curses. Since the demon continent is filled with magic, many researchers and alchemists strive there. Therefore, there are many research laboratories there. Sakurai thinks about demons. Floyd says you can ask the guild about demons. They must have demon books. The young man asks about the guild. Sakurai asks if he can come to the guild before they leave. Floyd agrees and says why not. Tina asks if she can go to Hiroki. Floyd tells Tina that it would be wonderful. Sakurai thanks the girl. After a while, Sakurai and Tina leave, and Floyd wishes them good luck. After a while, they arrive at the capital guild. He asks the girl at the front desk about how to remove the spell. She replies that if the hero needs a potion, he can buy it in the store or find it in the dungeon, or order it from the academy. If they need skills, then they have high-ranking books that they collect. The young man says that he understood. He is thinking about getting a skill book. It is necessary to go to a dangerous dungeon. He thinks it's impossible right now. Tina then apologizes and asks if they have any demonic pharmaceutical books. The girl at the front desk says they have such books. The young man does not understand what they are talking about. A minute later, the girl brings them a book. Tina thanks her for her help. Sakurai asks why the girl herself did not offer this book. She replied that the fact is that His Majesty the King has prejudices against demons. The young man understands this and thinks that perhaps Rory could not find anything, since she was looking in places subject to the king. The girl says that since they are a neutral guild organization, they have such books, but they cannot openly show them. Tina says that's why if you don't ask for the demon books, they won't offer them. Sakurai realized that this kingdom longs for the defeat of demons. Then Tina opens the book and shows the young man the section on removing curses. He says it's very great. The girl at the front desk is surprised by this. Tina examines the book and says that in order to brew a potion, they definitely need apricot grass. The young man asks about the apricot grass. Tina says it's a medicinal herb containing a large amount of mana. The young man sees an image of the apricot grass. Tina says that the apricot herb is a medicinal herb growing in some special regions that have only been found on the demon continent. Sakurai asks again about the demon continent. He remembers Floyd talking about it. The girl says that this is the continent of apricot and real demons live there. The young man remembers the continent of apricot. If it's named after a continent, then it's definitely there. Sakurai apologizes and asks the receptionist's girlfriend if she can leave him a message. He thinks about telling Rory about it. Tina says the demon continent. She would like to go there one day when she becomes a strong adventurer. The receptionist says that Miss Tina definitely has every chance of this, since with her pace it will take one or two years. The girl says she is looking forward to it. The young man listens to them attentively and says that one or two years is too long and he will not make it in time. There are many dangers on the demon continent. He didn't think it was worth dragging Tina and the others in. Then Floyd and Dine come up to them. They ask Hiroki and Tina if they are ready. After a while they come to a stone cave. The young man gives a shield to Floyd, Dinah and Tina. They all thank the young man for his help. The young man examines everything in the neighborhood and thinks that it is quite crowded here. Dine turns to Floyd and says that he can now work with Hiroki. The man rejoices. After a while they go down the stairs to the cave. Floyd says that then today they will go to the fifth floor. Tina, Dane and Sakurai agree. There were a lot of people on the second floor. Sakurai noticed this. Everyone trained and killed the mice living on this second floor. Others were trying to figure out if the monsters hadn't appeared this time. They stood and waited for someone to notice. Tina says it's very peaceful here. There aren't that many monsters, as there are plenty of other adventurers here. Sakurai did not respond to her words, but walked on in silence. He was thinking about going to the demon continent and there might be some problems with that. The main of these problems are money and firepower. If you forget about money, firepower is a serious problem. He even thinks that maybe he should hire a strong adventurer. Tina notices Hiroki's thoughtful face and asks the young man that maybe something is bothering him. Hiroki comes out of his thoughts and is surprised. Tina says that the young man has such a thoughtful look. At this time, Floyd asked Tina to use magic, and Dine asked Hiroki to use his shield. Suddenly, the mouse injures Floyd. Tina, frightened, says that she is very sorry. 
Sakurai also apologizes and uses the treatment and then the shield. Floyd says that even if there are few monsters here, you should not lose your vigilance. Sakurai flinches because of the reprimand and says that they are very sorry. After a while, the group comes to the fifth floor. Tina offers Dinah and Floyd some rest. They sit down on the steps to take a break. The girl gives Hiroki a flask of water and asks him to drink some water. The young man thanks the girl for this. Then Floyd turns to him and asks as if the young man has something to say to him. The man says Hiroki looks too sluggish today. He asks what happened to him. Sakurai is surprised by Floyd's words. Then Dine notices people in the aisle and says it's the same team again. Floyd says he's right. They looked very bad, and the woman and man were extremely angry. Floyd said they looked really bad, and then asked who it was. Sakurai asked what had happened to them. Dine said they met them a couple of days ago and he had a very bad feeling about it. The man tisked, and then saw Sakurai's group and said that it was them again. He was coming up the stairs and swung at Dine, telling him not to stand in his way. Floyd pulled the young man to him and said that it was very dangerous. Sakurai thought that they all looked very wounded, but since they are already returning, he thinks that they cannot be treated. Then the elf followed them. The girl tripped and fell. She hit herself so hard that she screamed in pain. Sakurai immediately rushed to her aid, and the man tisked in anger. The man went to the girl and said that Lucia was absolutely useless. He came even closer to her. The girl raised her head and looked at the man. He bends down and tells her that he will take her things. Sakurai thought that despite everything, they are still a team. Then the man throws the bow to the girl and says that they will go first, so the girl should return by herself. Sakurai was surprised by this, and Tina, Dine and Floyd were also surprised, and a member of Lucia's team looked as if this was the order of things. The girl tried to lift and asked her team to wait, but she suddenly stumbled again and fell because her legs could no longer stand. Floyd asked the man to stop and asked what his comrades meant to him. The man said that Lucia was tired and they gave her the opportunity to rest, then what is the problem? He would like to get out as soon as possible. Floyd called the man a very terrible person. At this time, Tina and Sakurai ran to Lucia. The young man immediately uses the treatment on the girl, and Tina holds out water and offers the girl to drink it. They give the girl a drink of water. She thanks them for their help. Sakurai said that this team of elves are just disgusting. There were many wounds on Lucia's body. Soon the elf got better and she thanks Sakurai and Tina for their help. The girl says her name is Lucia Plum and she's kind of an archer. Sakurai says that if he gets into trouble, he counts on the girl. He says his name is Hiroki and he is a healer with evasion. Then they looked at each other. The young man asked what it meant like and Lucia asked about evasion. Tina introduces herself and says that she is a magician. Then it's the turn of a knight named Dine. And the man introduces himself as Floyd and he says that he is something like a guard for these guys. Dine says that still, being a member of that company is the worst thing that can happen. He does not understand how it was possible to ask his comrade in the dungeon. The girl sadly says that she also had a lot of problems, even put them in danger, but she did not think that they would leave her. Sakurai asked about the dangers. The girl says she put all her points into the attack. The young man remembers about accuracy, which gives the probability of hitting the target. He asks if the girl really forgot about accuracy. Lucia sadly agrees. Dine says that if the accuracy is low, then you can hit your allies, and this is very dangerous. Sakurai asks if that's why the girl became a porter. Lucia agrees. The girl says that, most likely, there is no such group that will accept such an archer. Because of this she wears things all the time. Sakurai realizes that a sense of deja vu has befallen him. He asked how the girl lived before she became an adventurer. The girl replied that she was hunting near her village. Those monsters, if you don't kill them with one shot, they will become dangerous. Sakurai asks if this means that she has already killed monsters. The girl responds positively and said that she shot until she hit. Tina says that if the only problem is that the girl can get into allies, then they have Hiroki. Lucia didn't understand what the girl was talking about. Sakurai agrees and says they need to try it. Then he gets up and says he's bringing a couple of monsters. Lucia also didn't understand what was going on. Dane at this time asked the girl to get ready, because Sakurai will be back soon. Then he says he's back. Lucia screamed because she didn't understand what was going on. There were a lot of killer moles around the young man. The elf shouted that it was very dangerous. The young man asked Lucia to attack, but the girl said that she had already said that it was very difficult for her to hit, and she could hit her ally. Sakurai said that everything was fine and he would just dodge. The girl looked at him questioningly and asked if the young man was really evading. Sakurai said that if she was worried, then he could use the shield. The girl said that she understood, and then took out an arrow and took her bow in her hand. She fired a bow, and the arrow flew straight at the young man. 
Lucia was incredibly scared, but the young man was able to dodge. He told the girl to see that everything was fine. He asks her not to worry and to keep shooting. The girl understood and began to pull the bowstring again. Then suddenly she got right into the mole and was able to kill him. The girl was even embarrassed that she finally got there. She was incredibly happy. The young man was glad that at last one was killed. Then it turned out that the arrow flew through and killed another mole. In the end, the girl killed two moles in one shot. Everyone was incredibly surprised. She was delighted and said that she was incredibly happy now. Hiroki said there are three more left, so he suggests Lucia continue. The girl agrees. There were many misses, but, in the end, the killer moles were defeated. Floyd says that even so, Lucia's damage is just absurd. The girl was happy and told Hiroki that she had done it. The young man congratulated the girl. Floyd watched them and said it was very good. He said he thought the girl wouldn't want to go back to that group, so would she like to join them? The girl asks if she really can join them. She says that as long as Hiroki is here, she can be useful. Tina is happy and says that she is against Lucia joining. Dain also said that he would not yield in strength. The young man thinks it's hard to say that now. However, in order to get the Epricoat grass, he must go to the demon continent, where there are many dangerous monsters. He can't let Floyd and the others follow him to such a dangerous place, so he has to go alone. However, he needs to say it. The young man says that about their team. He says he will switch places with Lucia because he needs to go on a trip. They let him join them. He is very grateful. However, he needs to go. Tina asked about the trip and told him that they should go together. Floyd told Tina to stop. The man asked the young man where he wanted to go. The young man says that he wants to go to the demon continent. Floyd says he understood, but they can't go with him. Sakurai says he doesn't want to involve them because he has very little time. The young man says that it concerns the lives of his friends. Tina replies that in this case they are obliged to go together. Floyd tells Tina to stop because they will only get in his way. The girl starts crying and asks if this means that the young man is leaving. He pats the girl on the head and apologizes. He says that everything is fine and asks not to worry. The girl says that she will become stronger and wait for him. Floyd asks if the young man is really leaving right now. The young man agrees. Tina asks if this is really the last time they hunt together. Hiroki gives a positive answer. Tina offers them to give their all. She asks Floyd and Dinah to show what they are capable of. Dinah agrees. Floyd says that it would be necessary to change the settings of Lucia's bracelet. The girl thanks them. The man says they need to think about building without Hiroki. Then the main character offers them his idea. He suggests that Lucia should attack if the enemies are far away. If they get close, they will fight back as usual. Then Lucia steps back and covers their rear. Floyd says that such a construction sounds very good and he suggests they try it. Lucia says that if no one is around, she will be able to shoot arrows and will do her best. Hiroki says he will support them one last time. Soon they reach the fifth floor, and then the seventh floor where the mini orcs appeared. Going through the dungeon, the group began to interact better. A lot of arrows started flying at them, but one of them still hit. Lucia said she was able to get in again. Sakurai was delighted and said that the girl could shoot continuously. He was very surprised by this. The girl giggled in response. Sakurai thinks, although Lucia's accuracy is unimaginably small, the ability to kill with one shot compensates for everything. At this time, Tina uses fire magic and says that she will also work hard. Dine and Floyd were attacking monsters with swords at this time. Finally, the mini orcs were defeated. Sakurai said that they are advancing again and is using a shield. Dine is surprised that a shield appears at this moment. The girl replied that she would not be able to attack if they continued to attack like that. At this time, Tina was using fire magic. While Tina was using fire magic, mini orcs appeared behind Sakurai and Lucia. Lucia said they were already behind and very close. The young man asked everyone to move away. He ran out to the mini orcs to get their attention. The young man said that everything was fine and they were attacking him, so Lucia could safely attack. The girl agrees. The girl pulls the arrow and releases it, but misses. She is very tense, but the arrows cannot hit the target in any way. Sakurai understands that the interval between attacks is long. He calls Lucia and says if the girl can shoot faster. Lucia agrees, and Sakurai thinks that even if the girl understands, but she is afraid to aim at a person. In that case, he says it's pointless to aim at them. He offers the girl to aim at him and doesn't the girl want to try. Lucia is amazed at the young man's words. Sakurai smiles. The girl agrees and says that this time she will shoot for real. The young man dodges, but the arrows hit the orcs directly. He says the girl shoots incredibly fast. Finally, the mini orcs were defeated. Sakurai tells Lucia that it's very cool. 
the girl was amazed that the young man dodged all her arrows. Sakurai says that everything seems to be the way it is. He thinks they're going to have a lot of fun now. The young man suddenly realizes that he will leave soon. At this time, Tina says she has to work harder. She uses her fire magic. She's trying to make even more fire and hit even harder. Sakurai thinks that Tina and Dane have grown a lot these days. He can leave without regrets. Suddenly he notices something. The young man says that Tina doesn't look very good. He asks if he needs to treat her. The girl says she is fine, and then falls and loses consciousness. The young man was very scared and, running up to her, used the healing ability, but the girl did not regain consciousness. At this time, Floyd finished off the last mini orc. Floyd said Tina had run out of mana. It's not life-threatening, I just spent more than I needed. Sakurai thinks that Tina's mana is over. He understood everything, and the girl just spent all her strength, and then lost consciousness. He asks why the girl is so reckless. Floyd says she probably just wanted to show off. Sakurai asks what the man means. Floyd suggests going up first and then asks if he can leave Tina on Hiroki. The young man agrees. He understands that he will have to go to the very top, although he is least confident in his endurance. Now is not the time to think about this at all. At this time, Tina was calling Hiroki. After a while, Floyd, Dime, Lucia, Hiroki and Tina get out of the dungeon and head to the entrance to the capital. Floyd says he can rest now. Sakurai asks if everything will be fine with Tina. Floyd says she just spent all her mana. She'll feel better after the rest. He says that the girl has become very attached to Hiroki, so it is very difficult for her to accept the fact that he is leaving. She wanted to go with him and overworked, trying to show herself. The man says he will take the girl to the hotel. He turns to Hiroki and Lucia, asking if they can sell the materials. The young man replies that there are no problems and they will do it. They say goodbye, and the young man says that they will be back soon. Lucia asks the young man that he must be very tired. Hiroki says he's fine. He asks what about Lucia after what happened with that group. The girl says that everything is fine, she just didn't fit them, but here she feels that she fits them. Sakurai says he was also a little surprised by this. He thinks that even if he leaves, she will still suit them perfectly. The girl says it's most likely. After some time, Hiroki and Lucia come to the Capital Guild. The young man greets the girl at the reception desk and says that he is back. Then the girl notices Lucia next to Hiroki. The young man says that now this girl is in Floyd's group. Lucia says that her past group threw her into the dungeon. The girl is incredibly surprised by this. She says she will have to reprimand them, and then makes a note in her journal. Lucia says she thinks it's a blessing in disguise. The girl replies that if so, Hiroki interrupts them and says, could the girl buy all these materials? She says it goes without saying. In the end, they got 15,000 lots for the materials. The young man thanks the girl and leaves. Suddenly they see in front of them a man who was a former member of Lucia's team. He asked if they had taken Lucia into their group. He was incredibly angry. The young man recognizes this man as the former leader of Lucia's group. He asked him what he needed. The man leans over to Hiroki and says that the only one who could take a useless archer is a useless guy with evasion. The young man looks at the man's face and realizes that he is very angry, and then asks what he should do in this case. Everyone in the guild is paying attention to this brawl. Suddenly, Lucia bursts into the conversation and says that Hiroki is not useless at all. The young man asks the girl to move away. The man shouts that the girl dared to tell him such a thing. Suddenly, he swings and says that now he will show what kind of young man is really useless. He was aiming straight at Lucia, but Hiroki suddenly appeared in front of her. The receptionist girl shouted for them to stop because fighting is forbidden in the guild. The man aims directly at Hiroki's head, but misses because the young man dodges. The man told him not to dare to piss him off. He tries to hit again, but the young man crouches and dodges. Everyone understands that a man can't hit Hiroki. No one understood what was going on at all. Hiroki thinks he's dodging his attacks because of his high stats. The young man again and again evades. The man shouts that he has already got it, and then pulls out a sword. Everyone around was scared of what was about to happen. The man strikes with his sword, but he misses again. The administration girl closes her eyes. The man swings and says that the young man got caught. Suddenly someone takes him by the shoulder and says that the only one who got here is him. The man thinks that the rebel will be very upset by the cancellation of the license. The man tenses up. Then he looks at Lucia. The girl turns away from him with pride. Blushing, he turns around, leaves and says that he doesn't really need a girl. Everyone began to rejoice and shout enthusiastically. The young man did not understand what was happening. The man said that he was sure that the young man would be killed, but he deftly evaded. Others asked how the elf was feeling. Lucia thanks everyone and says that she is now in an amazing band. 
The man says that today he treats and offers everyone a drink. Sakurai says they need to go back. Sakurai says that their friend was injured in the dungeon. Everyone realized that the young man and the girl must be worried about them. Then the young man approaches the male guard and thanks him. The man replies that it's just his job. Then Lucia thanks the young man, and he replies that he is glad that the girl was not injured. At this time in the hotel, Tina was immersed in sleep. The girl wants to become stronger with Hiroki. She also asked questions about when he was so important to her. She had a dream where a young man was saying goodbye to her, and she begged him to stop and said that she would be useful. She didn't want to be separated from those who were dear to her. The girl wakes up in tears and screams for Hiroki to stop. Dinah grabs her hand. He is glad that the girl has woken up. Then Tina notices Floyd next to her. The girl looks around. Dinah says they're at the hotel. The girl lost consciousness due to magical exhaustion. He asks if the girl remembers about it. Then the girl realizes that the conversation about Hiroki leaving wasn't a dream after all. Dine tries to calm the girl down. Tina covers her face with her hands and says she's terrible. The girl apologizes and says that she spent too much mana and then lost consciousness and caused everyone a lot of problems. She says Hiroki must be fed up with this. Dine tells the girl that she shouldn't worry about this because Hiroki is not that kind of person. Floyd notices that the girl is so worried about separation from him. He says that it is not always possible to live your whole life with someone dear to you. You need to be grateful for the time spent together and how they changed each other. The girl talks about the time spent together and notices that Floyd is right. She doesn't have time to cry because she told Hiroki that she would become stronger. She then asks if Floyd and Dinah really haven't slept because of her all this time. She apologizes for bothering me and smiles awkwardly. Then she thanks them for everything. Floyd tells the girl not to worry about it, because the girl has gotten better. Tina agrees, and Floyd says that there is still time before dawn, so the girl should continue to rest, and Dine should go to bed. Tina smiled sweetly and thanked Dinah for his support. The young man asked the girl not to be so rash anymore. The girl apologizes, and Dine wishes her good night. The next morning, the girl comes down from the bedroom and sees Hiroki there. The young man says that he is glad that the girl is already better. The girl bows and apologizes for the inconvenience. The young man says that everything is fine and you just need to be more careful next time. The girl says that even though he is leaving, she asks not to forget about her and the group. Hiroki replied that it was, of course. He is glad that he met her in this world and is sincerely grateful. The young man says that in his free time he will think about her. The girl is very confused and Hiroki asks about where Dine and Floyd are. Tina replies that they slept, because they were very worried about her and went to bed late, especially Dinah. Then the owner of the hotel comes into the room. She asks if the girl has already woken up. She says she's bringing breakfast now, so the girl can sit down. Tina turns to Miss and says she has a request. She says it's a little selfish, but in gratitude for yesterday. She asks to be allowed to cook breakfast for Dinah and Floyd herself. The woman says it's very cute. She also offers to give her a couple of tips. The girl expresses her gratitude. Lucia says that Tina's breakfast sounds tempting. Sakurai says he is sure they will like it very much. Lucia then asks where Hiroki will go. The young man says that he will go to the guild because he needs to find information on how to get to the demonic continent. Tina says if Hiroki is really leaving their group right now. The young man says that not right now. He's staying here tonight. In addition, as soon as he finds the apricot grass, he will immediately return. They apologize for leaving after being accepted. Tina tells him not to worry about it. It would be great if he could find this herb quickly. Hiroki says that the girl is right, and he thinks that he should do everything possible to remove Ren's curse. The king bound the hero with a unilateral contract. Ren will eventually receive a death curse. He will not allow things to turn out the way the king wants. Lucia looks at the thoughtful young man. Then she interrupts his thoughts and calls his name. The young man responds. The girl asks if the young man will take her as his partner. Sakurai is surprised by what he has heard, and Lucia looks with complete confidence. The girl once again asks the young man if he will take her as a partner. Hiroki replies that he has already said that the demon continent is dangerous. Lucia hopefully says that only next to Hiroki can she fight at full strength. The young man understands that the girl is saying very true things, because he had the same thoughts. Lucia is well armed, and with him firing at his own is not a problem. Her ideal partner is very close. However, he is really happy with the girl's offer, but she is already in Floyd's group, so you can't make such a decision alone. At this time, Floyd said from the side that the young man could not worry about it. He yawned and went down the stairs. Hiroki asked if he was really awake already. The man greets everyone. Floyd asks if that's a bad thing. As a companion, Lucia is most suitable for him. 
Tina was very upset by Floyd's words. Floyd also says that if the young man had accepted her offer, he would have been able to leave the city much earlier. He suggests that they go to the dungeon to check. It is said that the monsters in the underground levels of the Morifukaki dungeon are similar in strength to their demonic counterparts. Hiroki says that if Lucia doesn't mind, then they can go. The girl said she would give her all. The young man offers her a try. Floyd says he needs to eat and then calls Miss. Tina comes out and asks him to wait a few minutes. Floyd looks questioningly after Tina, and Hiroki and Lucia smile sweetly and stand next to each other. Then the girl looks out of the room and says that Hiroki and Lucia will make a great team, so the girl will hold her fists for them. The young man thanks the girl. After some time, after breakfast, the girl and the young man set off. They come to the carriage square, and Lucia says that to get to Morifukaki they have to take the carriage over there. The young man enters the carriage and says that it is very big, just like a bus. Lucia looks questioningly and thinks about what the bus means. Then he sits down and sees an archer ahead, who had a huge number of arrows in his quiver. Hiroki asks Lucia where she gets the arrows from. The girl says that she has a special bracelet for this. The ability to create an arrow allows her to embody arrows, the number of which depends on the rarity of the bracelet. The young man looks at the bracelet and thinks that it must be made of very precious metals, since he can create as many arrows as he wants. He asks what the bracelet is made of, or chalcum or adamantite. Lucia apologizes and says she doesn't know its name. The young man says that it is really very convenient. Lucia laughs, and the young man thanks her and says that there is one less mystery. Then the girl calls him by name and says that since they are partners, he will gladly try his best. The young man is embarrassed by her confession and agrees. After a while they get off the cart. Lucia says they have to walk to the dungeon for about half an hour. It turns out that Morifukaki's map is only filled up to the 15th floor. The young man said that he was not the last. The girl agreed and replied that the map shows only those levels where adventurers have been. She suggests having fun going through floor after floor. Hiroki says it sounds really cool. They finally arrived at the entrance to Morifukaki. They are met by a male merchant and asks them if they are really here for the first time. He asks if they need a card. The young man agrees, and the man gives him a card. Lucy offers to buy some food. Hiroki sees a lot of things. He asks if there is something here that can attract more monsters to him. Lucia asks why he needs to attract monsters. Hiroki says that this way they won't attack the girl, and they can easily gather them in a pile so that it would be easier for her to shoot. He asks the man if he has something like that. He replies that, of course, he has one. He offers a jar of potion and says that if they drink this potion, then all the monsters will attack only the one who drinks it. He says one bottle is worth 2,000 lots. The young man says that it costs quite a lot. The man replied that one bottle is enough for about three hours. Hiroki realizes that three hours will be enough and so he buys three at once. He sighs and takes out the money and then says that the life of an adventurer is not easy. Sylvie offers to collect more materials for sale. The young man opens the bottle and immediately drinks the drink. The taste of it was simply disgusting. Lucia asked if the young man was okay. He replied that he was fine. He thinks that attracting all the monsters is a ridiculous price to pay for such a thing. The young man uses a shield and puts it on Lucia. Then they enter the dungeon on the first floor and see a large number of people. The young man says it's quite crowded here. Lucia agrees with him. Then Hiroki hums a song and invites the girl to move slowly. After a while they come to the sixth floor. The young man is surprised by this and says that it's like he's in the forest. Lucia also says that it is very beautiful here. Then the killer moth appears. Lucia thinks a killer moth is a bit weird. Hiroki says he agrees. Then the young man calls the girl and asks if she really doesn't hate him. There were a lot of monsters around the young man who attacked him but could not hit him. Lucia was startled by surprise. The girl screamed in horror and immediately began shooting arrows. The young man suggested not to slow down and get out of here as soon as possible. The girl agreed with him. After a while, the girl hits the monsters and kills them. The young man picks up the remnants from the monsters and says that it is better to pick up the materials. After a while, the heroes come to the seventh floor of the stairs, where the moths can't get in. The young man said that because of the swarm of moths, they were all exhausted. Lucia says he's done it. The girl was patting the young man's jacket from the dust. Hiroki asked her how she felt and if she really didn't hate him. She replied that it wasn't about the young man. She just really hates moths. The young man smiled and thanked her. Then he said that the monster attraction potion works great. With it, they will kill a lot of monsters. He offers her a little rest and a drink of water. The girl agreed and then said that she would drink water after the young man. 
Hiroki thinks they've come this far in just an hour. If the difficulty increases, he thinks the first potion will end by the 15th floor. Then he realized that they hadn't thought about whether three potions would be enough for them in the first place. Trying to get to the boss with this is too risky. In this case, only spend one and a half potions on the descent. He would like to try to defeat the boss together. He thinks he can end it for today. He thinks it's enough to focus on the shield to get back. The girl pulls him out of his thoughts and says that even though this is a test, they are still partners, so she would like to discuss everything together. He understands that there is no point in thinking about everything alone. He says that the girl is right, and then he explains everything to her. The girl says that we need to hurry up and move on. She thinks that together they will succeed. She is completely sure of it. He said he understood everything and thought he needed to get to the lower floor. The girl completely agreed with him. After a while, they arrived at the 16th floor. Lucia said they had reached unexplored floors. At this time, the young man began to drink the second potion. After a while they come across a monster that looks like a small boar with paws like a mole. Hiroki said that this monster is quite strong, and Lucia said that the bigger they are, the easier it is to aim. Then they arrive on the 20th floor. Hiroki thinks that the effect of the second potion is almost over. He suggests that Lucia hurry up and look for a ladder without engaging in battles. The girl agrees. Suddenly a monster appears in front of them, but he can't hit them at all. Then they see an entrance with a staircase. Hiroki thinks it's very good, because the potion was just right. They go down to the 21st floor and go up the stairs. Everything nearby Sean and the girl thought that this was an incredibly beautiful place. She leaned against the shining wall and asked the young man if this material was amber. Hiroki replied that the lower floor must be close. Hiroki says that the effect of the action is almost over and asked if they could take a break for a while. Lucia replied that it sounded great. They take dried meat and a sandwich out of their backpack. Lucia asked the young man if he was tired, to which Hiroki replied that he was not tired at all and it was probably harder for the girl, because she shoots all the time. Lucia says not at all. Instead of thinking about fatigue, it's better to fight while you have the strength. She says she is full of energy, but suddenly yawns. Hiroki asked if the girl really wanted to sleep. Lucia replies that she wants a little, because she hasn't fought like this for a long time. She smiles and asks if they can stay here for the night. The young man agrees, but says that how will they sleep without sleeping bags? Shouldn't girls find such places disgusting? Lucia says it should be normal for adventurers to sleep on the stairs. The young man says that in this case they can stay. He believes that he is the only one who is not used to this. Then he feels something and sees Lucia fall asleep on his shoulder. He thinks that the girl has worked so hard, so it's not surprising that she is so tired. He thanks the girl for trying so hard for him. He wishes her good night. If he goes with Lucia, he is sure that they will reach the demon continent. But he doubts that he will need to take such a big responsibility. Then it seems to him that he is falling asleep. The next morning they all wake up together. Lucia says it's a wonderful day to beat the boss. Hiroki says that you Lucia is in a great mood even after such a dream. He, too, did not have time to come to his senses as he fell asleep. The girl says that it is also very beautiful here. Then the young man uses a shield and puts it on Lucia. The girl thanks him. Then he drinks the potion, and the girl rides because it looks disgusting. After a while, a black dog appears. Lucia said that he appeared very quickly. The monster strikes and hits right into the shield. The young man was surprised that he did not miss and hit. At this time, Lucia was shooting an arrow from a bow, and she was very afraid for the young man. He asks the girl to calm down because he had a shield. She agrees and continues to shoot arrows from the bow. Hiroki told the girl to ignore him and keep shooting, because that's the only way they would become partners. The girl agrees. The girl puts five arrows on the bow at once and releases them all at once. It hits right into the black dog. Hiroki is surprised and asks if the girl can really shoot five arrows at the same time. She says she needs time to shoot. The young man says that, apparently, his evasion is not enough. Then he notices that something has fallen out of the monster. Lucia recognizes the demonic stone. Hiroki thinks they are lucky, and then offers to kill more monsters. Lucia agrees. Then they see a door at the end of the tunnel. The girl says that probably the boss's room is there. She thinks it's a very exciting moment. Then they gently open the door and try to look inside. The young man is interested to find out what kind of boss is there. Suddenly they see a three-headed dog and realize that it is a real Cerberus. Usually Cerberus is the final boss of the game, but why did he show up here so early? The main character says that everything is fine because they have a shield. He tells Lucia that when Cerberus attacks him, she should flatten herself against the wall and move to the back of the hall because her goal is the exit. 
the girl does not understand what the young man means. He tells her not to shoot the monster in any case until she gets to him. She asked if the young man was going to miss the boss. He agrees and asks her to look carefully. He hopes that three levels of the shield will be enough for him, and then uses his skill. He calls the dog to him. Cerberus wakes up and stands up to his full height and starts baring his teeth. Hiroki gets scared and thinks he's incredibly creepy. He tells himself to get ready, because Lucia was standing behind and watching. Suddenly, Cerberus raised his paw, and began to attack the main character with great speed. However, he missed because the young man was able to jump back in time. Hiroki looked down with relief and was glad that he was able to dodge. However, the monster's strength is simply incredible. Hiroki shouts to Lucia to go to the aisle right now. The girl said that she understood, and then slowly began to move along the wall. Then he noticed that the monster attraction potion didn't work and Cerberus started heading straight for the girl. He realized that the effect of the potion was too weak. The young man rushed to the girl and used the maximum strength of the shield. The monster tried to damage Lucia. He jumped right in front of the girl and shielded her with his body, and then used the shield on himself. Lucia apologized at that moment and said that she panicked. Hiroki said that everything was fine, because the monster had taken aim at him again. He ordered the girl to run to the exit again and quickly. But this time, the monster attacked him directly into the shield. The girl agreed and ran away. Then she arrived at the exit and shouted to the young man that she was there. Hiroki said it was just fine. The girl said, pulling the arrow, that she was attacking, and then told Hiroki to run here while the monster was in her sights. Suddenly, Cerberus ran straight to the girl. Hiroki shouted her name and told her to be careful. The girl pulled back into the depths of the passage, where the head of the Cerberus climbed. The girl pulls an arrow, and then attacks the monster blow by blow. Suddenly, Cerberus abruptly turns around and attacks the young man. But at the last moment he uses a shield, however, due to the monster's attack, the shield is destroyed. The young man did not understand what was happening. He immediately used several skills, shield, regeneration and healing. Lucia continued to attack and finally the monster was defeated. Cerberus let out his last heart-rending scream. The guy bows to the girl and says that even so, he still wants her to become his partner. The girl panicked and asked the young man to stop. She said that she was the first one who asked to be his partner. The girl smiles and asks Hiroki to take care of her. Then they decide to check the treasury. The girl says that she was able to get here for the first time. They open the chest and see a huge amount of coins and various useful things in it. Hiroki said there's a whole lot of money and a skill book here. Lucia added that there are two more large magic stones here. The young man takes the book in his hand and says that it concerns the skill book, and then he hands it to Lucia. He says that since the girl is here for the first time, this is her first skill book. The girl gives a positive answer. The girl says that Hiroki fights in the vanguard, so he needs to learn as many skills as possible. She says that if Hiroki refuses the book, she will be very worried. The young man replied that he was glad that the girl was taking care of him, but now their main task was to increase her strength. They need to prepare for the dangers of the demon continent. Lucia calls her skill the Great Arrow. Suddenly, everything around shone, and the girl received a new skill, the Arrow of the Wind. She was very happy and told Hiroku that the book told her that she had received the Wind Arrow skill. The young man congratulates the girl and says that she is just great. They decide to go back and go to the equipment store. They arrive at Hiroki's familiar place. They are met by a male dwarf who asks if he is the strange healer with evasion. The young man smiles and thanks the man for helping him then. The man notices the elf and says that the young man has finally got a partner and then congratulates him. The young man says that he has some money, so he asks to enchant his evasion equipment and improve it with this. He puts out several materials and the man's eyes widen. The dwarf turns to Hiroki and says that there are a lot of great materials here, for example, magic stones and the claw of Cerberus. The man says that in three days everything will be ready. The young man agrees. They're coming out of the gun shop. The young man says that while it's light, they can sell some materials to the guild. Lucia agrees to his proposal. After a while, they arrive at the capital guild. The young man looks at the bulletin board and realizes that he needs to leave a message for Ren and Ruri that they are going to the demon continent. He goes to the blackboard and thinks that they have left something for him too. Then the young man remembers that he can't read. Lucia approaches and asks if the young man saw anything. Hiroki realizes that he can ask Lucia to help him. The young man says he thought there might be a message on the board for him, but unfortunately he can't read. Lucia says she will help him. The girl lists the names Wilhooch, Drake, Carl, Ben, Sakurai and says that there seems to be nothing for the young man. Suddenly, the young man realizes that Sakurai is him. He tells Lucia that Sakurai is for him. 
He asks if the girl can read the letter. Lucia asks that it is something like a generic name. She says she will read it. Then the girl begins to read the letter that Watanabe allegedly wrote. The young man says that they haven't seen each other for a long time and it was decided that in two days he would go to the demon continent. He wants to meet the young man before leaving. Therefore, he is asked to wait for him tomorrow morning at the stones outside the city gate. He remembers a man who asked about the names of the heroes. Hiroki then suggested that Takanashi and Watanabe address each other by first name because the king only knows their surnames. The young man understands that the message that is on the board is from the king. He understands that the king's people are too stupid. Hiroki thought about the moment when all three of them told the king their surnames, and they agreed to address each other by their first names. Sakurai remembers that Watanabe is Ren's last name. They agreed to call each other by their first names. If there's a surname here, then it's definitely a trap set up by the king. Lucia asked the young man if the young man knew the sender of this letter. Hiroki says there are too many ears here. He'll tell you everything when they get back to their room. Lucia agrees with the young man. Then they see Hala at the reception desk, who already had a client. The man was calling the girl to go on a date with him. Hiroki said that it seemed that the girl was annoyed that she was being pestered. Lucia was surprised that Hala was being pestered by customers. The man asked to go with him to the parade in honor of the hero. Hiroki thought about the hero's parade. The girl asked for forgiveness and said that it was beyond her authority. The man was surprised and said that he was very sorry. Then the girl saw Hiroki. The young man greeted her and asked if she was free. The girl apologized to the man and said that the next client was waiting for her, so she could no longer talk to him. The man said they would see each other later. Hala then greeted Hiroki and said if the young man really wanted to sell the materials now. Hiroki gave a positive answer. Hiroki said he would like to sell some of these materials. The girl was surprised that the materials are really high quality. Then the young man asked what the girl had said earlier about the parade in honor of the hero. Hala confirmed this and said that in order to defeat the demon lord, the hero goes to the demonic continent, and to inspire him, they arrange a parade. Hiroki is surprised by this, and Lucia asks if the hero is really going to defeat the demon lord. The young man thinks that he is still in the hero's group and whether he will be forced to join the parade. At this time, Lucia and Hala were talking about the fact that the hero really exists if you believe the rumors. Hiroki said they should absolutely see him. Lucia replied that he was right, and Hala added that she had heard that the parade would start tomorrow at noon. Then she gives the money to the heroes for the materials, and the young man thanks her for it. After a while, Lucia and Hiroki arrive at the Shooting Star Tavern. The young man turns to the girl and says that about their recent conversation in the guild. After a while, the girl is surprised that Hiroki is familiar with the hero. The young man gives a positive answer and says that they came from a distant country. Then he asks if the girl believes him. Lucia replies that she believes the young man. She always thought he was a little strange. She smiled and added that when the young man said that he was a friend of the hero, everything in her head fell into place. Hiroki replied that his fighting style is not particularly appreciated in this country. He thinks that it is not worth telling the girl about their world and says that they were called by the king from distant lands. Lucia realized that this was the reason why the young man could not read. Hiroki says that the king ordered them to kill the demon lord, but his decision to put all his skill points into evasion angered him. When he was thrown into prison, the hero Ren agreed to wear a contract bracelet in exchange for his freedom. Lucia was amazed by the kindness and self-sacrifice of the hero. Hiroki said that the girl is right that Ren is a good guy, but now there is a curse hanging on him and more than one. The girl was surprised and scared. The first curse that the young man spoke about was a bracelet. Without the permission of the king, he cannot move freely, and the second curse is the curse of the basilisk, which will soon kill him. He says that in order to cure Ren, he goes to the demonic continent to get apricot grass. He doesn't have time to level up. He will face enemies so strong that their levels are not even a match for them. Lucia replied that she understood. Hiroki says that besides the king hates him and at the moment that's all he wanted to tell the girl about himself. He turns to Lucia and says that if that's why she doesn't want to be his partner, the girl interrupts him and calls his name. She puts her hand on his and says she will go with him. No matter how many times he asks, she will always answer that she wants to be his partner. Hiroki was touched by this and then thanked the girl. Then the girl asks what then sent the message to the young man. 
Hiroki says it was the king. Lucia is surprised. The young man says that it was for such cases that they told the king their surnames, not their names. It turns out that the king pretended to be a hero and tried to contact him. Lucia understands why the young man was surprised when she read him the note. She says that if it's a trap, then it can just be ignored. But Hiroki replies that he will go to his destination. Lucia asks if he will really go, despite the trap. The young man responds positively and says that it may be related to Ren or Rory. The next day he comes to a place near a large stone. He examines the stone and says that neither Ren nor anyone else is here. Then an arrow flashes from the bushes and flies straight at the young man, but he dodges with dexterity. He looks at the arrow lying down and as he thought, it was a trap. He turns to the people behind the bushes and asks if they are Watanabe. At this time, the court bug turned to Watanabe and asked him if he was ready for the parade. The young man answered positively. Ren replied that, Nevertheless, this parade is very embarrassing that even Rory is eager to leave. The man replied that he showed how important it was for the king to conquer the demon lord. That is why he entrusts this task to them. Before they leave, could Ren wait another minute? A man approaches a guard standing next to him and asks how things are going. The man replied that everything was fine and he took the bait. The man grinned back. He says that he is absolutely useless, as he thought. Until now, he couldn't end it, as there was a chance that Watane would find out. Going to the demonic continent, he won't be able to hear about it. The man says that Sakurai is like an ice war. At this time, a lot of arrows are flying at the main character, but he deftly evades each one. Several men with swords run out at him. The young man asks them what happened to Watanabe, but gets no answer. The men continue to attack the young man wave after wave, but they cannot hit him. They did not understand why they could not hit, and the young man continued to dodge. The man says that even so, but he is just a stupid person with high evasion. The other man says to look at everything from the other side. He's a healer, which means he won't be able to attack them. They surround the young man and say that this is just a battle of endurance and one day they will hit him. Sakurai grinned and asked who said he couldn't attack. The man took him at his word and told him to attack. The young man raises his hand and scrolls it in the air. He smiles and says he won't hold back. Suddenly, a stream of air forms next to him. The men understand that the young man used wind magic. They realize that the young man had been a magician all this time. Hiroki is just smiling at this moment. The men realize that the situation was difficult and began to retreat and flee from this place. Hiroki watched them go. At this time, Lucia looked out from under the crown of the tree and asked the young man how he liked her wind arrow. Hiroki replied that she was very cool. Those stupid mercenaries mistook him for a magician. The girl jumped down from the tree and laughed. He said the wind arrow was just amazing. While the arrow is flying, it is surrounded by a magical wind, so even if it misses, the target will receive damage. He says there are a lot more battle strategies available to them now. The girl was glad of this. He said it was a good thing she missed. Hiroki responded positively and said that if she had been hit, someone could have died. Then the young man says that they still tried to kill him, so their death would not be their fault. Lucia is surprised by this. The girl asked if the king really hated him so much. Hiroki said he'd have to sort it out when they got back. Most likely, at the moment, the king knows the most about how to get them back to Japan. First of all, they need to go to the demonic continent, where the apricot grass grows. Lucia replies that they have to help the hero. Hiroki thinks that no matter what, he will save him. Hiroki then tells Lucia that they need to hurry to the parade. The girl agrees. After a while they come to the square, where a lot of people have already gathered, and Ren was riding in the very center of the parade, and Ruri was behind him. Lucia ran ahead and said they were in time for the hero's parade. At this time, Hiroki was surprised that he could see Ren. He looked at the smiling Ren and thought that he did not show even a little bit of his suffering. He thinks that Ren doesn't want to make others worry. Hiroki sighs and sees Ruri, who is following right behind Ren and waving her hand. He thinks Ruri is really used to all this. She behaves like a noble person. However, Ren is still timid. Lucia asks the young man if these two are really his allies. The young man says that it is so. Lucia says that Ren is a brave hero subject to a curse, whose healing requires an apricot herb, but he seems to look normal. The young man agreed. Suddenly Ren saw something in the crowd. He gets off his horse and asks the other people to disperse. Ren rejoices and approaches Hiroki. Lucia is surprised by this. Ren approaches Hiroki and says that they haven't seen each other for a long time. He wants to name the hero Hiroki, but calls him by his last name. Hiroki asks Watanabe if it's okay that the parade star is out of place. Ren said he let Takanashi occupy the crowd for a while. Rory said that everything was fine and she would manage somehow. Lucia said she already knew that, but Hiroki is just amazing. 
Ren thanks for the information about the Epricote grass. He would go to the demon continent to find her. He managed to make the king think that they were going to defeat the demon lord. Actually, the parade is in honor of this. The young man laughs in response. Then Ren asks what about the young man. He wonders if he has enough money and if everything is in order. Hiroki says he's fine and has a new partner. Ren looks at the confused Lucia and asks if this is the girl. The girl confusedly introduces herself that she is an elven archer, and her name is Lucia. It's very nice to meet her. Ren says his name is Watanabe, and then he asks to look after Sakurai. They shake hands. Ren says it looks like the young man has found a great partner. It's a pleasant relief for him. Hiroki says that he should worry about the young man, because doing such crazy things is dangerous. Watanabe is surprised and asks how much the young man knows. Hiroki pokes him in the face and tells him that he knows absolutely everything. Ren rubs his shoulder and laughs. Hiroki thinks that even if they were called here, there is no need to sacrifice themselves and yet the fact that Ren is cursed remains a fact. Now they need to find a healing herb to remove the curse. Hiroki says that he and Lucia are also heading to the demon continent to find the Epricote grass. Ren asks if Hiroki knows that the demon continent is a dangerous place. The young man replies that they will somehow cope and it's better for him to think about himself. Ren says that he understood everything and Sakurai understood this world better than anyone. Hiroki asks not to make Takanashi worry. Ren agreed. At this time, a court magician was passing through the square. He glanced in Ren's direction, then turned away. However, he suddenly realized that Watanabe and Sakurai, who should be dead, were there. The man started shouting about what Sakurai was doing here. The young man asked Ren who it was. The young man replied that he was a court magician. Then Hiroki remembered that this man was in the hall when they were called into this world. Then the young man remembered the moment when he was attacked by assassins. He smiled and told the magician that it really was he who had summoned him this morning. The man started shouting about what the young man is talking about, because he doesn't know anything about it. Ren asked if the man had actually called Hiroki this morning. The man shouted that it didn't matter. Then he shouted to Watanabe and said that he was disrupting the parade, so he had to return immediately. The young man apologizes and says that he is already on his way. Ren tells Hiroku that it's time for him, and then asks the young man not to go crazy. Hiroku says goodbye and says that this is actually his line. Lucia says Watanabe is a good person. Hiroki confirms this and says that Ren is not a bad guy. Then other people run up to the young man and the girl and say that they had a conversation with the hero himself and whether they really know the hero. They ask to tell about the hero. Hiroki understands that they are in trouble. He tells Lucia that they need to leave. He asks how about discussing a plan to travel to the demon continent. Lucia agrees. After a while they come to the Shooting Star Hotel. Lucia says that their current location is the capital of the Kingdom of Landscape. Hiroki points out a place on the map and says that the demon continent is right here in the north. Lucia replies that this is true. Then the young man points to some more symbols and asks if they are whirlpools. Lucia responds positively and says that the sea is restless now, so they need to go around. Hiring a ship will be expensive, so all they have left is to walk along this narrow piece of land. The girl replies that she has heard that there you can go through a sea of trees and a dungeon of the seabed. Hiroki realizes that they have two roads. Then the door to the hotel opens and Floyd, Dinah and Tina come in. They are very happy to see Hiroki. Hiroki greets the guys. Floyd says it looks like the two of them have officially become partners. Lucia agrees and says that she even met the boss for the first time and it was a big Cerberus. Floyd, Dinah and Tina shouted at the whole hotel about whether Lucia really said about Cerberus. Floyd says whether the young man and the girl knew that this dungeon didn't even have a normal map. He says these two are just great. Dinah and Tina also say that it's just amazing. Hiroki says that they are now deciding which way to go to the demon continent. Floyd says he has never climbed there, but he has heard that the seabed dungeon is very difficult. It would be better to go through a sea of trees. Hiroki thinks about the sea of trees. The dungeon should be safe on the stairs, so he thinks it might give him some leeway, but the dungeon implies a boss. However, do they need to go through the boss room to reach the demon continent? That's what they don't know. Tina says very few dare to fight him, so if they get into trouble, she doesn't think anyone will find them. She asks if it's not dangerous. Dine turns to Tina and says that the girl is too timid and isn't danger part of the adventure. Tina says it's Dine who's too carefree. Lucia says that she has also heard that the enemies in the seabed dungeon are quite strong. But just because they don't have time to raise their levels. If they could level up during the journey through the dungeon, she thinks it would partially solve their power problem in the demon continent. Hiroki says that she is right, it is extremely important for them not to forget about pumping. 
there's probably a huge level gap between them and Ren and Rory. Floyd says that the rise of the level in the dungeon of the seabed, during the hard way, Dane rejoices and says it's just a dream. In another situation, he would have just stopped them, but for them the level of difficulty cannot be measured the same as for everyone. He decides why not try. Hiroki says that, in that case, they choose the underground path. Lucia agrees. Floyd asks when they're leaving. Hiroki replies that they are leaving the day after tomorrow. Dine says he understands, but it's very fast. If Floyd gets drunk, he'll pass out the next day, so they may never meet again. Floyd turns to the hostess to bring more meat and more. He turns to Hiroki and offers to accompany him while he has the opportunity. The girl comes out of the kitchen and says that she understood, and then asks if she wants to serve ale first. Floyd says it's going to be a long goodbye, so you need to bring all the meat you have first. Lucia asks that they pour it for her too. Floyd asks if the girl can drink him too much. At this time, Tina turns to Hiroki. She asks the burden to be careful on the way, to which Hiroki says it's time for him to go. Two days later, Lucia and Hiroki come to the dwarf man's gun shop. He says that everything is ready. He gives Lucia a bow, and the girl is happy that her bow has become much bigger. Hiroki says that it won't be too heavy to carry such a bow because of the size. The man smiles and says that there is no need to worry, because he added a small feature with the help of the demon stone. He asks Lucia to pour some magic power into the bow. The girl adds a little magic power to the weapon and the bow suddenly instantly decreases in size several times. Hiroki says it's amazing and it's just like Chubang. The girl asks what the young man is talking about. The man suggests that they stop talking nonsense, and then invites the young man to go and change clothes. Hiroki puts on his new suit with improvements. The man says he used materials from Cerberus, so the protection is increased. Hiroki says that all this has become a good outfit. Then the young man notices a new characteristic in the suit and asks what the relief parameter means. The man explains that all of his clothes are significantly reduced. In addition, things in your pockets will also be a little easier. The young man thinks that it is very convenient. Then the man gives the blade and says it's a farewell from him. No matter how weak his attack is, it's better to carry something with you. The young man thanks him. The young man scrolls and says that the blade holds perfectly. He thinks about why it feels nice to look a little more like a fighter. Lucia laughs and says Hiroki looks like a child in new things. The young man says it's embarrassing. The man also starts laughing. Then he says that he also put relief on the backpack. Inside he put all the necessary things for the trip, including boots. Lucia says it should be more than enough. The man offers Hiroki to put it on his back. Hirok puts on a backpack and says that it is so light, so he says this to the man with great gratitude. The man says that using skills to make his equipment easier is the norm. However, as he knows, for the guys, this may not be the norm. The young man asks if experienced adventurers really have a lot of non-combat skills. The man says that this is commonplace. Detection skills to find monsters, cleaning skills to clean things quickly. The young man is surprised by these skills. The man says that since they started talking about this, there is a skill that creates an extra dimensional storage. The young man is surprised by this and then thinks that this is such an ordinary thing in games. Lucia also says it sounds really cool. Then the young man asks the man if his order is finished. The man says he almost forgot about it. The man gives him a bag with an order. The young man thanks him. Hiroki asks Lucia to give him a hand. The girl agrees and holds out her hand. The young man says that this is a new bracelet of their group. When you wear Aspen ones, the team spirit feels better. The girl looks at her new bracelet and then says that she is very happy and thanks Hiroki. Then Hiroki says it's time for them to go. The man tells them to show up when they come back. This is how the young man left the country to which he was called for adventures. A few days later, Lucia and Hiroki arrive at the Sea Depths dungeon on the first floor. They go to a place where there is a small amount of water. The young man says that it is difficult to walk here. Lucia replies that it's good that they put on hiking shoes. Hiroki says that they were warned after all that it would not be easy. We need to be alert. Lucia says that's right. Finally, the killer mermaid monster appeared. Hiroki tells Lucia to wait here and he will distract him. The young man runs to the monster and calls him. The merman begins to growl and then attack the young man. The young man dodges and calls Lucia to attack while the monster is distracted. The girl hits the monster with an arrow right in the head, but he did not die, but instead pulled the arrow out of his head. Hiroki and Lucia are surprised by this. The monster then started attacking the man with its weapon again. The monster did not hit the young man and also a lot of arrows flew in their direction. Finally, one of Lucia's arrows hit the monster right in the head and he was defeated. Hiroki thinks they have just started, but they already have some difficulties. Lucia apologizes to the young man for the fact that she could not get in for a very long time. 
Hiroki says it's okay, because it's just a dungeon of a difficult level. However, still, if they go further, they may run out of arrows and strength. Then the young man looks to the side, because there is some rustling. Lucia is surprised, and killer sea mermaids and sea slugs appear on the side. Hiroki shouts that monsters have appeared and there are even more of them. Hiroki creates a shield to defend himself and then slaps his cheeks. He says that we need to go into battle, and then asks who will go to him first. The sea slug starts to attack, but the young man dodges, and the monster misses. Then the killer mermaid starts attacking, but he misses too. Hiroki thinks he can dodge even if there's an army of them. He asks Lucia to attack now. The girl agrees. After a while, all the monsters were defeated. Hiroki rejoices and tells Lucia that they could. The girl rejoices at another victory. The young man thinks that the enemies are time-consuming, but very light. He offers the girl to go on, and Lucia agrees with him. They finally reach the seventh floor. The young man realized that the water level had risen. Lucia notices that they are moving slower now. The girl asks Hiroku if it's harder for him to dodge. The young man agrees, but says that everything is fine. But the main thing is not to get even deeper. Then the monster Ice Fenrir appears. Hiroku was scared for a few minutes. Lucia said the monster looks strong. Hiroki remembers Cerberus and says that he has very unpleasant memories with dogs. The girl says that this monster does not care about the water because it creates ice under its paws. The girl says it's cheating. Hiroki turns to the girl and tells her to keep her distance. The young man runs to the young man and says that there is very little space here. Suddenly Fenrir releases ice spikes, but the main character easily evades this attack. He lands behind the ground and splashes water. Although there is little room here, but he can dodge. The young man calls Lucia to attack. The girl agrees and pulls the arrow. The girl shoots a few arrows and suddenly hits Fenrir, and then she tries to hit the monster again. Fenrir uses the attack with ice spikes again, but the young man manages to bend. He thinks that if he climbs onto the ice, will he be able to dodge more easily? The young man jumps on the ice, but suddenly slips and falls straight into the water. The monster immediately also directs its head and paw into the water to hit the young man, but it uses evasion and swims right under the ice flow with lightning speed. The young man pops up right behind the monster, and at this time Lucia attacks the monster with a lot of arrows. Suddenly Fenrir turns around, but gets directly hit by the arrow that Lucia fired. The monster is dying. The young man stands up and exhales with relief. Lucia runs up to the young man and asks if he is okay. Hiroki asks the girl not to worry, because he just did not dodge, and next time he will definitely succeed. Lucia agrees, but says that after two or three floors they will not be able to continue. She understands that the young man wants to go further, as far as possible, but now it is difficult. The girl says with sadness that it would still be better to retreat. The young man is surprised by her words. She says that, besides, they don't know how many floors are left, if they meet enemies stronger than them, they may die. The girl is sad, of course, but she thinks they should come back. The young man thinks that she is right. The further they go, the harder it becomes to fight, and their strength is not enough. They had to strike three times to defeat Fenrir. He doesn't want to admit it, but he agrees with her. He says that it is good and suggests that the girl go back and walk through the sea of trees. The girl agrees. The girl offers to go back to the stairs and dry her clothes. Hiroki looks at Lucia and thinks that the girl is sad, although she offered to return but maybe she wanted to continue. Now is not the time to lose hope. That's why he suggested that Lucia become stronger and clean up this dungeon. Lucia looks at the young man and then happily says that she agrees with him. They're going to get stronger and come back here. After a while, they arrive at a village near a sea of trees. Hiroki says that now that they have a place to spend the night, they can have lunch. Then various dishes are brought to them. The young man says that it's all just like a shawarma. He says that this hot sauce is simply incomparable. He can eat at least a mountain of such dishes. Then the young man looks at the sad Lucia and addresses her by name. The girl shudders. He asks if the girl really doesn't eat that. Lucia says it's not like that at all, and then apologizes and says she was just thinking. He offers them to take food with them. Lucia says it's a good idea. Hiroki realizes that the girl is probably thinking about the incident in the dungeon. That night, the young man wakes up and realizes that it is still night outside. He pours himself some water and thinks he hasn't had enough sleep. That's because he gave so much on the raid. He wonders if everything is okay with Lucia. Then the young man looks at the girl's bed and sees that it is empty. He wonders where she is. The young man thinks about what the girl has been thinking about all day, and then realizes that she really went to the dungeon. He runs out of the room and tries to figure out where she went. He remembers that the girl suggested that they retreat. He remembers her sad face and reproaches himself for what if he had realized it earlier. He mentally calls her by name. 
Hiroki thought that because they had returned from the dungeon earlier, Lucia might have thought it was her fault. If he had been more attentive, this would not have happened. He tries to find Lucia and does not understand where she is. Then the guard at the wall heard a knock on the door. The man asked the young man what had happened, because it was so late. Hiroki asked if the man had seen an elf here. He replied positively and added that if it was her. At this time, the girl was trying to kill local monsters. She hit, missed, and hit again. Suddenly, the monster crashes into a tree, and the girl begins to fall from the branch on which she was. At the moment of the fall, Hiroki manages to use the shield in time. The girl comes to her senses and is surprised that there was a shield. Hiroki calls the girl by name. The young man asks if she was hunting now. He asks her not to leave so suddenly because he's kind of really worried. Hiroki asks the girl if she is really still thinking about that dungeon. The girl is sad and says that if she was stronger, they would have passed it. The young man smiles and asks her if she remembers what she said to him when they united. She said they would make decisions together. He says he was very glad to hear it, because he wanted her to share everything with him, because they are a team. The girl was amazed by his words. She says that she, too, when she saw how the young man was thinking about everything himself, she felt very lonely. The girl says she seems to have done the same. The girl apologizes to the young man. Hiroki says that he understands that she wants to end this, but isn't it better to do it together? The girl agrees and thanks the young man. Hiroki says there's still time before sunrise, and he doesn't feel like sleeping at all. He offers the girl to raise the levels until morning. The girl agrees. Then she asks why the young man is in pajamas. The young man replies that he was in a hurry. The girl starts laughing. Before that, in an underwater dungeon on the seventh floor, Uri called the spell as the weakening of the territory, the maximum duration of the flame. The girl said that this way they will not get wet. Ren said that the girl really knows how to do this. He asks if everything will be fine, because it's risky to use so many skills at one time. The girl agreed and said that they spend almost no mana. Ren said that Rory was just great. The girl drives away the water and says that the young man is flattering her again. Then they use search magic. Rory is surprised and says that monsters are approaching and there are quite a lot of them, so Ren should be more careful. Several Fenrir appear. Ren pulls out a sword and shield and calls the girl by name. Ren says he sees a monster. Rory's flame stops the monsters, and Ren attacks the monster through it. The snow Fenrir was defeated, and then several more monsters were approaching. Rory used wind magic to destroy the approaching monsters or just delay them. Ren held them back with his shield, and then tried to dodge the attack with his paw. After he restrained the monster, he stabbed it with his sword. Finally, the snow Fenrir was defeated. Ren says that they moved with the help of ice and he was very surprised by this. Ren says that Rory's magic is just incredible. The girl does not listen to him and asks how his wound is. They have a lot of potions with them and if they need them. The young man thanked her and said that he was fine, because he could heal such a wound himself. Ren had a passive regeneration skill. Rory said that she understood, but if it hurts him, then he should speak right away, otherwise he always endures. Ren agreed. The girl thinks that because she is standing behind him, Ren never shies away. The young man says that there is no need to worry and he is fine, because he has regeneration, and the girl knows about it. The girl says that she knows about it, but he still feels the pain, so he should take better care of himself. The young man agrees and apologizes to the girl. Ren thinks that at such moments he remembers about him, about their friend, with whom they were separated. Then they arrive at the stairs on the twelfth floor. Ren offers to rest here. Ren says they've been through a lot and he's even tired. He hadn't trained so much in his world. Ren tells Ruri that she was doing sports in their world. The girl says that it's not really a sport, but she studied archery and horse riding. Now the young man understands how the girl managed to saddle the horse so quickly. He likes people who don't waste time. The girl says that she just wanted to do something to occupy herself. Ren says that he also had a lot of free time, so he often did household chores. Rory says it's not free time. Ren asks if the girl really thinks that. He could always be with his family and it was a lot of fun. Rory realizes that Ren is very lonely right now. She says he must have been very close to them. Ren calls the girl by name. She says it's not that she wants to meet her family, but she likes living with them in this world more. Ren asks if the girl really likes it here more than in Japan. Rory says that he has encountered difficulties here and does not see much good, but for her it is still the opposite. The girl says she likes it here more because she has Ren and Hiroki. The girl has such a family whose interests she should put above all, that's why she had no friends. Ren thinks her family was either feared or wanted to use her influence. Ren says that the girl had a much harder time. She says that only he probably understands what it was like for her. Now they only see him as a hero. Sometimes he thinks how he would have been treated if he had been born that way. 
and yet, he understands how much the girl values them. This is what makes him happier. Buri thinks that she didn't tell about her family, but they understood everything without that and are always with him, even if she doesn't ask. Ren asks if it matters to Ruri which world they are in. Ren says that not necessarily in this world, but even after returning to Japan, the three of them will remain friends. The girl was amazed by Ren's words. She agrees with his words. Ren says that if he is with her and Hiroki, then even in Japan they will have fun. He asks if this is really the case. Ruri says that if the three of them get together, they can do everything. He says that when they return, they will say goodbye to the king, who just uses them. Rory agrees with him. Then the young man coughs and squeezes his chest. The girl calls him by name, but he apologizes and says he just choked. He laughs and apologizes again. Rory is silent, but Ren says that everything is fine. The young man continues to squeeze his chest, and Rory turns around and says that she will come down and wash her face. Then she'll come back and fix her armor. Ren asks the girl to beware of monsters. Rory says that everything is fine and she sees them. Then Ren waits for the girl to leave, and then he begins to writhe in pain and sharp stabbing feelings permeate his whole body. Rory thinks he's probably hurting because of the curse. However, while she is around, he does not show his weaknesses. The girl stands behind the wall and calls the young man stupid and says that she is worried about him because they are friends. Hiroki and Lucia come to the path that connects the continents of Rockwet and demons. The girl hits another monster, and the young man is happy about it. Lucia says she finally managed to hit the enemy. The young man says that nothing can be done because nothing can be seen because of the fog. It would be risky to then go through the dungeon without potions. Because of the fog, it is difficult to navigate on the map. It looks like she won't be of any use. The young man says that he thinks they are on the right path. The young man does not notice the abyss into which he is going. Then he starts to fall, and Lucia screams, calling Hiroki by name. He starts falling and thinks he can't even see the ground. He shouts to put the strength in one hit, and then uses a shield. The young man uses a shield and falls. The young man starts coughing from the fact that he was scared as hell. He sits down on the grass and then looks up and says that he really fell right from there. Lucia calls the young man by name from above. Hiroki calls Lucia by name. The girl shouts that she is very glad that the young man is safe and then asks how he is and if he was hurt. Hiroki says he's fine, but he doesn't think he can climb back in. The girl says she won't be able to jump down to him either. Hiroki says that's right, she needs his shield to jump off. However, if he increases the strength of the shield, then his range will become smaller. It's too risky to put a shield on her while she's falling, and he also doesn't want her to experience this horror. The girl asks, maybe then they will continue to move apart until they meet. The girl says there aren't many of them, but there are monsters here. He asks if the girl will be okay. Lucia tells the young man not to be afraid. She will jump on trees. Hiroki says that, as expected from a forest dweller. Then they determine their place of further meeting. If the girl walks along the cliff, she will find a large stone at which they can meet. The girl agrees and asks Hiroki to be careful. The young man says that she should be more careful too. Then the young man says that he ran, but suddenly something started attacking him from the side. Hiroki managed to dodge in time. It's only been a few seconds, and he's already stumbled upon a monster and how unlucky he is. A monster called Mushroom Rental has appeared. The young man thinks, looking at the mushroom, that it is very cute. Then he looks at the stump under the mushroom and says he takes his words back. The young man keeps dodging the monster and says he still looks cute, probably. He believes that these monsters are easy to evade, but there are even more of them. Suddenly another monster approaches him. He believes that the fog is not so thick, apparently, this is due to the fact that he fell off a cliff. He thinks he needs to hurry up and meet Lucia. At this time, Lucia was deftly jumping through the trees. She thought she was in her native forest, except that she's the only one here. She thinks that since it's foggy here, she needs to be more careful. At this time, a team of three people were fighting with the rental of mushrooms. An elf girl was picking grass nearby. Suddenly, a shadow covers her. A man, a member of her group, hears the girl's scream. The girl was grabbed by a huge red bear. She thinks this is the end of her. Suddenly, the bear started attacking, but a shield appears right around the girl, and she also heals instantly. A man with a girl is surprised that they see the treatment. The girl turns around and sees Hiroki there, and also says that he uses magic from such a long distance while he fights monsters himself. Hiroki shouted at them not to worry about him and better deal with that monster. The man shouted thank you to the young man. Then they saw a huge number of monsters around the young man and asked him about where this magic came from. Suddenly the bear attacks the girl and knocks her down. The man calls Lily by name, to which the girl replies that she understood and creates a lot of arrows. The girl calls for automatic arrows and directs them directly to the bear. 
Hiroki is surprised that the girl attacked with arrows without a bow. She said it was very cool. Finally, the red bear was defeated. The man said thank you to the girl, and then saw a huge pile of monsters next to Hiroki. The girl said she would help him with these monsters. The young man thanked him. The girl uses the creation of an arrow, and then launches automatic arrows. Mushroom rentals have been completely defeated. Hiroki said that the girl is an archer, but she launches arrows without a bow and it's very cool. The girl replies that the young man is simply incredible, and then thanks him for his help. The man apologizes and says that they have relaxed their vigilance, although it is their job to protect her. He saved Pino, so the man asks how he can thank the young man. Hiroki says he's glad he could help. The girl says that if you remember that he used such a spell from such a long distance, and at the same time ran away from monsters. Hiroki says that, as he thought, 100% recovery is really incredible. As a player, he was so busy with his evasion build that he paid too much attention to it. But in this world he is not a player, but a healer. The girl asks the young man who he is. The man says, isn't it supposed to introduce yourself first? The girl remembers and says that her name is Pino and she is an elf, as well as an alchemist. The second girl introduces herself as Liliana and says that she is a rabbit hunter of the beastmen race. The young man sees the girl's rabbit ears, and she is still a hunter. He starts to shine all over. He thinks of an alchemist, a huntress with rabbit ears and a dwarf bodyguard. The girl asks what about the young man. Hiroki gives his name and says that he is a healer and a human being. He can heal and dodge, but he can't attack, and when he stays, everything ends in tears, so he thanks for the help. The girl says it's amazing to be a healer with evasive abilities. She sees this for the first time. Hiroki says that he has an archer partner, but they are now separated and he goes to their meeting place. The man is surprised that the archer was left alone. It's very dangerous and they need to meet as soon as possible. Hiroki says that the girl is a forest elf and moves well in trees, so everything is fine. Pino is surprised and says that she is an elf. He shows them the map and says that the meeting place was this stone. The girl says it's a little far, and the map is all torn up. Then Pino says that then maybe they will take the young man to there, as a reward for her rescue. Hiroki says that it would be great, because he is still not sure that he will be able to avoid the attacks of each monster, because there are more of them than he expected. The girl with bunny ears asks if the young man is really saying this after dodging 10 mushrooms. Hiroki starts laughing. Pino asks him if she can have lunch with these mushrooms. The young man speaks positively. The girl says it's so much and a few more materials. The girl says that the mushrooms that grow on mushroom leases do not disappear when he defeats them. Hiroki asked if she was really going to eat these mushrooms. The girl says that they are very tasty, so she offers Hiroki to try. The young man says that the girl is right and it all looks like an ordinary mushroom and they look one in one. Pino likes this kind of food. Pino says that since a young man can collect such a large number of mushrooms near him, it means that he can eat deliciously at any time. The young man says that Pino will not do this. The girl says that the idea is brilliant. The man says that the girl has a strange idea of genius. Then he asked if the girl had finished picking mushrooms. He suggests to hurry up. The girl says Hiroki can call her by her first name. She doesn't really like formalities. She also says that Liliana and Asana can also be called by name. The man says his name is Hassan. The young man says that he understood and he is very pleased. The young man calls the names of Pino, Liliana and Hassan. And then they hit the road. Hassan asked Pino not to run so fast forward. At this time, the man was attacking monsters and Hiroki was dodging them. Hassan said that the girl did not forget that she almost died because of this. Pino sighed and apologized. She said she couldn't resist when there were deciduous grasses here. The girl asks them not to be afraid. Thanks to Hiroki, they have a shield and there is no longer a weak one. Now she's just invulnerable. The man shouted to the girl not to waste his shield. The girl said she was spending it. After a while Hassan told Hiroki that they should be near the stone. The fog has finally lifted, so they can see the great tree. Hiroki asked about the great tree. Pino asks the young man to look up. The young man raises his head and suddenly his eyes begin to sparkle. He sees an incredibly huge great tree of another world. Hiroki was amazed by its size. Tino asked the young man if they were really seeing him for the first time. It is said that it contains a large amount of magical power. There are only a couple of them in the whole world. Suddenly Hassan felt something and told everyone to be on the alert. He said the other half of that red bear is here somewhere. Tino was surprised that all the trees were broken, as if the consequences of the battle. Hiroki asked about the other half. Hassan confirms and says that red bears usually move in pairs, so he thought it might be a female. Females are much larger than males. Hiroki thought that Lucy was all alone. He hopes she's okay. 
Then Liliana said that there are arrows here and they are very high and should not be the same. She says that something bad has happened, since the archer has shot down his sight. Really, this is a new and fast kind of using hallucinations. Hiroku started screaming. Then he says he thinks this bear attacked my partner. Hassan said that we need to hurry up and follow the trail of arrows. Hiroki thanked the man while he prayed that Lucia was okay. All together they ran to Lucia to help. Liliana said it looked like this female was very fierce. Pino confirmed her words and said there was too much destruction here. The girl says that if Hiroki's partner is an elf, but in a battle with an angry beast, she could receive a blessing. Hiroki wondered about the blessing and whose it was. After a while, they notice a fallen tree and a red bear in the distance. Then they notice a girl on a tree branch. Hiroki calls her name and she turns around. Suddenly, the bear strikes a tree branch and the girl falls down. Pino screamed that she was going to fall, but Hassan interrupted her and said that this would not happen on his shift. Hiroki shouted at that moment that he could still. Zassin didn't understand him. At that moment, Lucia gathered herself, landed on the ground and fired her arrow at the enemy. Hiroki asked everyone to rely on him, and then used intense reinforcement and a shield. He just wanted to make it. At that moment, everyone was terrified. Lucia was suddenly covered by a special shield, and she immediately fired an arrow and hit right into the bear. The red bear was defeated and Hiroki thought that Lucia had just done a perfect job at that moment. Pino was surprised by Lucia's courage. The girl called Hiroki by name, and he said he was very glad that the girl was okay. Lilana said that a direct shot at point, blank range is a real feat. Lucia asked Hiroki what kind of people they were, to which the young man replied that they helped him fight off the monsters that were chasing him. The girl understood. Lucia then bowed and expressed her great gratitude for saving Hiroki. Liliana awkwardly said that it was not worth the thanks. She said she was still surprised that she wasn't scared of that red bear. Lucia smiled and said that it was because she understood that Hiroki would protect her, because she believed him. Hassan smiled at that moment and said that Hiroki was trusted and he was just great. The young man was touched by the girl's words. Then everyone was distracted by Pino, who found something in her backpack. The girl took out a magic potion and said that it was for Hiroki. The young man was surprised and asked what it was. He thanked the girl and said that he was still full of mana. Pino screamed in horror that this could not be even after he used the shield from such a distance. She asked him how limitless his magic power was. The young man laughed and thought that he could not tell her that he himself did not know this. Then Pino notices something and says that Lucia is well done, and then points to the sky and says that there is a gift for her. Hiroki and Lucia look at the sky and think about what gift Pino is talking about. Suddenly, a leaf lit up on the tree, and then it began to fall directly to the girl. Lucia said it looks very nice. She said it was very strange, because only this leaf glows. Pino replied that the great fruit tree was rewarding Lucia for this fight. The girl asked what it meant. Pino replied that the great tree loves elves very much. Hiroki understood what Pino was talking about when she said that Lucia could receive a blessing. As expected from another world, everything is different here. Pino said that this leaf is very valuable, so she should treasure it. The girl also said that if Lucia made an arrow out of a leaf, she would kill everyone with one shot. But there would only be one arrow, so she should think it over carefully. Lucia laughed and said that now she has a trump card. Hiroki said it's very cool and he wants one too. Pino replied that even if he took one, it wouldn't shine, so it didn't make sense. Lucia looked up and said that the fruit tree was just great. She thanked him for giving her one of his leaves. He will be her good luck charm. Hiroki asked if there are trees that love people. Pino replied that there are very few such trees in the world and they all love elves. Although she has heard that there is an elf who is called the elf of the great trees and this may mean that there is an elf whom the trees love more than others. Hiroki asked about the elf of the great trees. Lucia replied that according to the rumors she knows about, that was his name, but she doesn't know why. Then she asks Pino, but the girl answers in the negative and says that it is still a mystery whether there is such an elf or not. Then Pino said it was getting dark, and then suggested they spend the night here. Hiroki said why not. Soon Hiroki and Lucia take out a tent from their luggage. The young man says that the tent is just wonderful. He looks inside and thinks that it is unlikely that both of them will fit in there, even though it is just a portable tent. Then he thinks about him and Lucia. Even if it's normal in games, he forgets that Lucia is already a woman and is it normal that they will be just the two of them. They have already slept in the same room, but this is a small tent, and they will definitely accidentally touch each other. Lucia settled down in the tent and said that it was very comfortable here. The young man agreed with her, and he thought that everything seemed to be fine. At this time Hassan is also trying to assemble his tent. Hiroki says the tent is getting bigger, and Lucia adds that it's just like her bow. 
Hassan said they made the materials for the tent smaller with magic stones. Liliana adds that they had to work hard to find these stones. Lucia says they still have a long way to go, so she thinks she'll start collecting them too. Hiroki agrees with the girl. Pino says to look at everything. She used stones for kitchen utensils. Hiroki thought it was a luxurious way to use the stones. Pino seriously said that food is important and it enriches your mind and body. Hiroki agreed with the girl, and Lucia laughed from that. Today for lunch there will be mushrooms from mushroom errands that she received from Hiroki, and the meat of the ferocious hog they caught yesterday. Lucia was surprised and asked if Pino really eats monster meat. Hiroki thought that Pino was eating monster meat just like in those stories about the hitmen. Pino said it was delicious. Pino has no preconceptions when it comes to ingredients. Lucia says, don't monsters disappear after defeating them? Pino says that if you use this, then no. Liliana adds that Pino is still an alchemist. Creating drugs is her path. Cook after putting the ingredients on the leaves of the tree with butter on top and the dish is ready to serve. Soon the dishes were ready. Pino warned everyone that it was hot. The young man noticed some familiar properties in this dish. Lucia begins to eat. Everyone is looking at her carefully. Suddenly she opens her eyes and says it's delicious. Hiroki says it's his turn now. Hiroki laughs and says they have a winner. Lucia asks which winner we are talking about. Pino replies that that's it. Yummy makes you a winner. The young man replied that everything was not enough for him. Pino laughs and says she knew it. After a while, Pino says that it looks like they're splitting up here. She's very sorry. Liliana says that Pino really likes to run everywhere, so his shield will help them out a lot. Pino says that they will have to separate, although next to Hiroki she could collect materials and not be afraid of anything. Hassan says that Pino's shield is worn even more, so there are also disadvantages. Hiroki laughs. He says it takes them quite a long time to get to the apricot continent, so they should take care of themselves. Hiroki thanks Pina, Liliana and Hassan. The young man said he would give Pino another shield as a parting gift. The girl thanks the young man for this gift. Hassan wishes them good luck, Pino says they will see each other, and Liliana wished them to take care of themselves. The young man tells them to see you later, but he thinks that it will not be long before they reach the apricot continent. Lucia notices something, and then tells the young man to look to the side and see if there really is a shop there. Hiroki says it looks like it, but where is the seller there? They approach the shop, from where a little fairy flies out and greets customers, saying that she has an excellent selection of goods. The fairy says that only the owners of the leaf of the great tree can visit her shop. Lucia asks if the fairy really means this leaf. She shows a leaf of a tree that she recently received from a fruit tree. The fairy says that this is exactly the leaf. Hiroki says he doesn't have this sheet and asks if it's okay if he's here. The fairy says that with the owner of the leaf, he can come whenever he wants. Hiroki thanks the fairy for this permission. Lucia says that in that case, she asks permission to look at the goods. The girl asks what this equipment is for. The fairy says she will give them a good buff and is worth about a million. Hiroki stands in shock and says that it is very expensive. Lucia says she won't be able to buy it, and Hiroki was very depressed at the time. Fairy says it's actually one of the cheapest products. She asks to return when they become experienced adventurers. The young man thinks about what if he puts something made in Japan up for exchange. He starts rummaging in his backpack and turns to the fairy merchant. Maybe she will be interested in these things. Lucia and the fairy carefully look at the young man's things. The fairy asks if the young man really has such a wonderful handkerchief. Its quality definitely surpasses the technological level of this world. Even by the standards of Japan, this product is one of the highest quality. Lucia says this handkerchief is so cute. The fairy says that if the young man gives her this handkerchief, she will make him a magic bag. Hiroki immediately agrees. He is surprised that the fairy agreed. Lucia asks if the young man is really sure about this. The fairy at this moment was rejoicing and shouting with happiness. Hiroki says that everything is fine. If they have magic bags, it will speed up their progress. Lucia says that if the young man says so, then everything is fine. Hiroki didn't want to give away what once belonged to Rory, but now his main task is to get rid of Ren's curse. I'm sure the girl wouldn't be upset to learn that in this way he increased the effectiveness of their group. The fairy thanks the young man. Now that she has such a rare handkerchief, she is in a great mood. The fairy says that for their sake she will make an exception and enchant the bags for both of them. She says she is very generous. She suggests they start. First for that guy. The young man says his name is Hiroki. The fairy repeats Hiroki's name, and then says that Lucia is nearby. The fairy says that, in that case, she will enchant the bag for Hiroki first. 
fairy uses the ability to expand the boundaries of space. Hiroki is surprised. Then the fairy says that everything is fine and everything is ready. She offers the young man to put something inside. The young man asks if you need to put anything in there. The fairy replies that almost anything is possible. Then he tries to stuff the tent into the bag and asks how about it. Lucia says it all fits and it's incredibly comfortable. Hiroki says he didn't know fairies had such a useful skill. The fairy is proud of herself, laughs and says that everything is so. Then she decides to do the next one and uses the ability to expand the boundaries of space. Lucia is happy about the new handbag and says a big thank you to the fairies. The fairy thanks them in return and says it was a good deal. Then she asks if there is anything else. The young man remembers something and asks if the fairy has a potion from apricot grass for sale that removes curses. Fairy apologizes and says that this product is currently out of stock. Then the young man asks what about the apricot grass itself. The fairy says that if she had such an herb, she would have prepared a potion long ago. She does not sell apricot grass unprocessed. The young man understands, and then says that, in any case, he no longer has any other valuables with him, so he will have to get it himself. The young man says that there are other payment methods besides money and things. She's thinking about what she should ask for. Hiroki thinks he's suddenly got goosebumps. However, if it is for the sake of saving Ren, then he is ready for anything. His body tells him to run away from here, but his mind asks him to stay. He says he will do everything in his power. The fairy asks if this is really the case, so she will look forward to their meeting. She has shops in other places, she will ask them for something as soon as she has a potion available. The young man says that he is counting on the fairy. Lucia also thanks the fairy merchant. The fairy tells them to see you soon. Lucia says it's the first time she's seen a fairy, so she's just thrilled. Hiroki agrees and says that she is bigger than he imagined. Thus, he passed the Sea of Trees. A few days later, they finally arrived on the continent of Epricot. Lucia is happy that she sees huge mountains in front of her. They notice a city in the distance. The girl offers to look for information about him there. The young man agrees and offers to look around there. After a while they come to the continent of Epricot, a city north of the Sea of Trees. Hiroki says that this city is different from the cities of people. Lucia says there's something mysterious about him. The girl also rejoices and says that this is the lamp that glows with magic. There are lots of shops here with all sorts of magical things. Hiroki examines the people and says that they look no different from humans. It seems that this country is more peaceful than he imagined. Is it really necessary to defeat the demon lord? It feels like getting along with the demon lord will be easier than with the king of men himself. Although he still has no idea what this very demon lord looks like. The young man suggests to start by finding a hotel. The girl agrees with him. Then they arrive at the Weather Vane Hotel. The young man asks about Liko. The girl says that everything is correct. In the landscape, these are lots, and in the Epicoat, they are Likos. Hiroki is surprised that there is a different currency here. Lucia remembered that now she remembered that people were talking about it. The young man is upset. Lucia apologizes and says she forgot about it. The girl says they can exchange money at the Adventurer's Guild. Hiroki says that they just have things to do at the Adventurer's Guild, so he suggests Lucia to go to the Adventurer's Guild. After a while, they arrive at the Adventurer's Guild. The girl at the reception desk greets the newcomers. Hiroki says that he would like to exchange lots for Liko and ask her about apricot grass. The girl says that the current rate is 0.8 to 1. For example, if they exchange 50,000 lots, they will receive 40,000 lots. She asks if they want to exchange money. Hiroki is surprised and thinks that it feels like he will lose on this operation. He believes that it depends on the prices of goods in Epricote. The young man agrees to exchange money. The girl says that as he wishes. Then she says what about apricot grass? Unfortunately, this is a very rare herb. Even their guild is not equipped with its reserves. The young man says that he wants to make a potion to remove the curse from this herb, so he politely asks to tell where it can be found. The girl explains that there is no special place where this grass grows, but they have guesses. The young man asks what guesses the girl is talking about. She agrees and says that this herb grows in places with a high concentration of magical power, but there are no guarantees that you will certainly find it there. The young man says that he understood. The girl opens the map and says that places with a high concentration of magical power are mountains, rivers, lakes and forests. There is no information that the apricot grass is underwater, so either the mountains or the forest remain. There is much more magic concentrated in the mountains, but the monsters there are much stronger and more dangerous, so they don't often go there for materials. In the forests, the magic power is weaker, but the grass is most often collected there. 
Hiroki understands that, it turns out, the concentration of magical power is higher in the mountains, and monsters are not so dangerous in the forests. Another girl who just came up gives a positive answer. She apologizes for distracting and asks if he is Mr. Hiroki by chance. The young man says it's him. She rejoices and says she was right. Recently, someone was also interested in this herb, so she thought about the young man. She says that they asked to tell Mr. Hiroki that they are going to the mountains. The young man understands that it is from Ren. The girl says that's right. The young man thinks that they can split into two groups and agrees to go to the forest. The young man agrees and says they can go there. Then the girl says what about the potion to remove the curse? They will need the help of a first-class alchemist to brew a potion from apricot grass. The young man is surprised. They realize that they had not taken into account that there must be someone capable of such a thing. The girl says that alchemists do not study in the guild, so the guild will not be able to help them. The girl asks if they have alchemists as friends. Hiroki thinks about his alchemist friends and then remembers Pino. He thinks that if only he could send applications to friends. He's not sure if Pino is a first-class alchemist, but maybe she knows other more experienced alchemists. Lucia agrees and says they didn't ask them where they were going. The guild girl says they can still try to hire an alchemist through the guild, so they shouldn't despair. Hiroki says the girls are right. He asks them to place an appropriate ad. Lucia says that if at least one alchemist shows up by the time they find the apricot herb, everything will be fine. The young man agrees and tells the girl to search. The girls from the guild show a point on the map and says that in this place there is the greatest probability of finding grass. The deeper they go into the forest, the higher the concentration of magical power, but the monsters there are stronger. They are warned about the possible risk, so they go there. After a while, the heroes come to the exchange of cabs. The hero sees demons, beastmen and elves. The young man understands that there are representatives of very different races here. Lucia says that in the capital of the landscape, you rarely see anyone other than people. Then the young man is surprised again and calls Lucia by name. The young man shows an unusual animal and asks what it is. Lucia says that this animal is called Pakaru. Lucia says they are cute, but quite aggressive. Pakaru do not allow strangers to approach them. After that, they got into a cart to the apricot forest. The young man thought about it even when they were riding in that cart. However, spending the whole day on wheels is a severe test. Lucia says there's nothing to be done. The carts are all like that. Lucia says that if he is uncomfortable, why not use pillows bought recently? The young man agrees. Lucia says she'll take one too. After a while, Lucia will see the young man and says that they have arrived at the place. She says that the young man slept very soundly, despite all his complaints. He rubs his shoulder and says that his whole body is numb. Lucia says it's because he never changed his position while he was sleeping. The young man apologizes for waiting and then notices that it is already evening. The man laughs and says that the travelers must be very tired. He says he will come back here every day at the same time to pick them up. The young man thanks the man. Lucia says it's going to get dark soon, so she suggests spending the night right here. The young man says it's a good idea. The next morning, it's time for the heroes to leave. He asks where they should go. Lucia tells him not to worry, she found out in the city. Hiroki says it's a great job. It seems that the places with the greatest concentration of magical power are springs and caves. There is a spring in the other days of the journey to the north. Continuing to move in this direction, they will be at the entrance to the cave in another day. The young man understood and it means they will go north. He drinks today's portion of the potion to attract monsters. It tastes terrible. Hiroki says it's not easy to drink three bottles a day. Lucia thanks him for his daily work. Lucia says that apricot grass is small trees, so you need to look carefully at your feet. The young man thinks that they will probably find it if they go deeper. Then the slime demon and the orc demon appear. The young man says that monsters think that the word demon in the name will make them stronger. Then he noticed that the orc could use magic. Lucia says maybe it's because they're demons. Then the young man thinks about the magic of monsters and that this is a chance to test whether he can evade magic. When he watched Rory and Tina apply their skills, it seemed to him that the magician could choose where to direct the spell. Last time, he failed to evade the spell when he was attacked by a flying slime, but he has since raised his level. He needs to test it on weak enemies. The demon orc begins to attack and the young man realizes that his projectiles are flying very slowly. He decides to use his shield just in case. He also decides to prepare for instant healing. Lucia notices that something is wrong and shouts to the young man to immediately dodge. Hiroki listens to her and moves aside, and the magic clot flies past. Lucia begins to sulk at the young man and says he could not have evaded the attack much earlier, because she almost had a heart attack. The young man apologizes and says that he just wanted to see if he could evade the spell. 
Lucia wonders why the young man wanted to see if he could evade the spell. Hiroki thinks he just succeeded. When the flying slime charged him with a spell, he was level 1, and the evasion skill was 51 points. Now his level is much higher, and he has improved his evasion to 87 points. He says it's just his guesses, but it's possible that evading spells requires much more dexterity. Hence, in order to dodge advanced monsters, he would need a higher level of evasion. All the monsters were defeated, and the young man thought about whether his guesses were correct. Lucia apologizes and says she doesn't know that. She had never heard of anyone leveling up the evasion skill. Hiroki remembers that he had completely forgotten about it. He is still far from a perfect build with evasion. Two days later they reach the spring. Lucia says that this place is very beautiful, and Hiroki said that they have to find the apricot grass. Lucia agrees and suggests starting a search. They are looking near the shore of the spring. Herkoi says he can't find anything. Lucia replies that this is bad and she will have to stay here for the night. Hiroki offers to get to the cave tomorrow in hopes that they will find something there. The night of the fourth day in the forest came. The young man was trying to figure out where the cave was located. Then he realized that they were lost. They had to go to the cave on the third day of the course. He thinks it's worth going back to the source. Lucia asks him not to worry and says that she is on the right track and needs to move on. Hiroki agrees with her. He says that this place is overflowing with magic, so they are moving in the right direction. At this time, the girl notices something. She crouches down and tells Hiroki to look in one direction. The young man gets scared and covers his mouth with his hand. They see a huge number of goblin demons. The young man says that there are at least 30 of them and there is a magician among them. Hiroki thinks it will be hard, because this time Lucia is also with him. The young man whispers to the girl that she needs to leave quietly. She agrees. They rustle and try to get away between the bushes so that they are not noticed. However, the young man steps on a twig and thinks that this is quite some kind of abundance of cliches. At this time, the girl creates a lot of arrows and starts shooting at the goblins, shouting for the young man to get ready. He realizes that there is no choice left and starts running in the other direction. The monster attraction potion is still in effect, which means they will all run after the young man. Then the hero realizes that the goblins are not keeping up with him. If so, he shouts at Lucia to shoot at them while he runs in circles. The girl agrees. The goblin mage then uses magic and attacks the youth. He uses healing and thinks that goblin doesn't use spells often, so he completely overcomes incoming damage. Then the young man runs to one place and sees a huge number of goblins there and realizes that they have a whole lair there. The young man is surrounded by monsters. 